Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the regularly scheduled uh, Board of Education meeting for the Waterloo Schools and ask that you join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. And will you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And our mission statement, the Waterloo Schools community commits to a comprehensive system of education and support to assure that each and every student will graduate prepared for college, career, and citizenship as evidenced by continuing ed education, pursuing a career path, and contributing to a community. So the first item then on our agenda this evening is information from individuals and delegations. And I would ask our board secretary to come forward. I believe we do have uh, a, a comment for this evening. Correct. Let me take that off. Um, we do have one comment. Um, board, I will send you this email after the meeting tonight so that you can have it in writing. You'll notice when you see that that the date on the um, email is August 25th. I received the comments from the gentleman the day after our last board meeting, but he did still want me to read them to the board tonight. Um, and it is from, the gentleman's name is Patrick Kaiser. He is a West High parent. He says, I would like to express my complete displeasure with trying to resolve an issue at West High with the grouping of my daughter for days going into school. She does a shared ride with other classmates in dance. I started out by calling West High School to get her switched to Group B and was given the runaround by office people. After the third phone call asking for the principal, I was given to another department for some reason. This woman was very unprofessional and has absolute no people skills to even listen to what I was trying to say. Not sure how or what her job is, but very unhappy with her. After another call and asking to discuss with school board, the principal finally called me back. She understood what I was asking and said should not be an issue. Then on Friday before school starts, she sends me a text, not a phone call, that they could not change my daughter to the other group. This caused a lot of stress and anxiety to my daughter for absolutely no reason at all. If West would have given us this information weeks in advance, maybe other arrangements could have been made instead of the week before school starts. Obviously, Waterloo Community Schools is not concerned about the parents and issues they cause us by not doing their jobs in a timely manner. If Wes cannot handle a simple issue like switching groups, then I totally understand why parents are moving their kids to other schools like East or Cedar Falls. Signed, Pat Kaiser. And that is the only one I received. Okay, thank you. Um, and I would like to just um, add to this that because that was received a f a f you know, almost a full two weeks ago, that issue actually has been resolved at this point and the student has been moved. Um, there was just a freeze on moving students from A and B. And so I just wanted to let you all know that that had happened. And Dr. Lindemann, if you want to add anything. Yeah, not really. Um, well, yes, one thing. I mean, I know we. No, no, no. The, um, the the principal that he references in there is actually me so he oh, he te yeah okay. he texted me on a sunday morning and so i replied to him right away and i said let me see what we can do and so i worked with him all week and as it turns out we just had we had like a hundred and some requests to switch so i just told him that we just needed a few days to see exactly who was going to show up and i just i asked him for one week if we could just hold and um and and I, he just he was hoping that we could do it that day he wanted it done before monday of school and so i just asked him to hold for a week in the end we were able to resolve that and we did get him switched but so or get her switched so we got her we got her switched but i just wanted to let you know that the person he's referencing is actually me so uh, okay. for the other 99 or how many students were we able to yep. resolve we just issues? needed to see like who was going to show up because we still had kids switching from in person to virtual and back and forth and so we were trying to look at class sizes so that and then they took all of the kids who were a's who requested to be b's and then they took the kids who were b's and requested to be a's 
And they kind of measured those out and they looked at their schedules and so they were able to do that. Um, in the meantime, in that week, some people had also called and said, never mind, we didn't think we could get arrangements, but now they see who's in their class, so they're gonna rate, so some of them withdrew. Mm -hmm. And so they were just trying to get that, and so we just asked for a one-week freeze just to get our land legs because we hadn't done that. So we did, we did get it, but I know that um, this particular gentleman wanted it right away. And I, I get that, it's, it's hard, because he was just looking at the one, but I was trying to look at all of those. So anyway, we're good. And did we happen to at all be able to find out who the person was potentially that was not delivering good customer service? Yeah, I, I did not, I did not know who that was. I did not know, and he was not sure any names or so. I don't know. All right. So are we okay. are we stable at this point? Yeah, it's good now. Um, I think we were able to grant all of the requests besides the people who pulled them out. So, and that was. Um, East had some requests too, and they granted all of theirs, but they had significantly fewer. I think maybe they had a dozen. Mm -hmm. um, not very many at all. West had quite a few. So. So we were able to still balance class sizes. Yeah, for the well. most part, there were some that you know, as we did it, we we had originally talked about doing it by um, alphabet, like A through J mm -hmm. comes on and is an A, and and the other ones are a B, and so. Um, in the meantime, Infinite Campus actually came out with a program that actually looks at all of them and makes a suggestion of who's A's and who's B's to balance all of the classes. So we use that instead. And so they were pretty stable, but um, are pretty consistent, pretty balanced, but there were a few classes where, you know, it couldn't balance everybody 50%. So there were a couple classes that were, you know, maybe you know 20 and 11 or something like that so and I did hear one one teacher had shared with me that they had uh, 18 in one and four in the other so they did um, work to try to resolve that the best they could but knowing that if you switch to balance one class you might throw another <laughs> class out of whack yeah. so um, they're they're pretty good and I think I think the staff are you know being good. really good about having non-balanced classes in some cases but I think for the most part infinite campus the software did pretty well my daughter's in a class of six which is great for her yep <laughs> so I mean it just it, it, it's the, yeah. you know there's nothing else that can be done yeah so what's the what's the primary reason for wanting to switch transportation in this case um, in this particular case the student um, carpooled with another child yeah. who was in a different group is that common? Is that a, was that a common reason or? or well, or? Um, it was some of the reasons. Others were, you know, my best friend is in this class. Yeah. Um, there were some, and we we understood that. I mean, we we tried to do that, but it it's if we're not going to let everybody pick, then you know, either you run the system or you don't run the system. And so, yeah. and and a lot of the a lot of the <coughs> requests, to be honest, went away after the first week of. They they said that before I want to be over here, and then after a week of school, they're like, oh, you're in my class. Okay, I'm good then. So, okay. a lot of them did go away. But I think that's a valid reason to to have at least one friend. friend. Yeah if you yep. will the hard part is that a lot of them didn't know they didn't know who was in their class yet because they hadn't yeah. seen the rosters and so we just said if you can just give us a week that's all so i i felt like we felt like that was fair but i i also understand you know mm -hmm. it's it feels urgent because socialization is one of the i think advantages of in-person school and even though it's not like it was uh we can accomplish a certain uh percentage of that mm -hmm by doing by being flexible like yeah. you are so Agreed. I think that's good all right well then we'll move on um, to the consent agenda this evening which consists of six items the minutes of the August 24th 2020 regular board meeting which is item a the personnel appointments and adjustments which are item B the bills due and payable and the bills paid between board meetings item C the donation from the R.J. McElroy Trust, which is item D. The agreement between the Waterloo Schools and the Cedar Falls Community School District, which is item E. And the Tri-County Child and Family Development Council Incorporated Contracted Service Agreement, which is item F. So are there any items that board members wish to have removed from the consent agenda? B as in boy. B as in boy, okay. F as in Foxtrot. F as in Foxtrot. And I'm going to remove item D, 
because I work for the McElroy Trust, and so I will be abstaining from that vote. So. Uh, B and E. B and E. All right, so then can I have a motion to place items A and C on the table, please? Oh, I'm sorry, I meant C. Okay. So C and E. C and E, sorry. Okay. So then can I have a motion to approve the minutes of the August 24th, 2020 regular so board meeting? Thank you, Sue. Second. And a, and a second. Excellent. Then we'll move on to item <laughs> B, which are personnel appointments and adjustments and that recommended motion. We need to vote. Oh, and we need to vote. vote. Sorry, 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 sorry. All those in favor then of approving the minutes, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, same sign. Chair votes aye, motion carried. Sorry about that. Um, that takes us then to item B, which is personnel appointments and adjustments. And the recommended motion is the Board of Education approve the personnel items as listed. Thank you, Jesse. And a second? Second. India. And discussion. Just quick questions about the district um, sub. Have we used those um, currently in the past two weeks, those positions? Um, I think we approved in the previous board meeting two other positions at the very top. And so we're hiring two more. These are the other additional additions that we're hiring. Correct, and there'll be one more, there'll be one more at the next board meeting. Okay, so have we, have they been working currently in the, or are they just basically on call or? No, they, they have to report to the building every single day. Okay. Kingsley, that mic's not on. There you go. We got you. <laughs> um, I was wondering. I thought I could hear myself. So, yes, three of the building subs um, are currently working. Um, actually, all four of them are working right now. So, yeah, yeah they are working. Yes. Okay. And they're, uh, remind us the buildings they are in again. Okay. So, you have Expo, um, Carver, Lincoln. Lincoln. I'm Cunningham. Cunningham, and there will be one more at Bunger. Bunger, okay. Now, I will tell you that there may be some, thank you for remi remembering, I totally forgot. Um, there will be some maybe changes just based on, right now we had one of our buildings that just had a, a rash of absences. Um, so we may have to make some changes that we didn't necessarily know or add maybe an additional building sub. Um, but we're still working those uh, plans out. Many of the plans that are articulated both in the um, weekly update but also at the last board meeting are working effectively um, with our, one, our building subs, but also, as we talked about before, our para certification program as well, where paras are, are in a lot of buildings stepping up and providing that support. Okay. I'm glad that you addressed that. Cause I was, I was going to ask, I know that we have these district subs going to these buildings, but let's say there is another school that is in need, they can be transferred over if need. Yeah, we really want to be careful with doing that. And so that's where we're, we're looking at it, reviewing it this particular week, because again, there's one particular building that has had some issues with subs um, just because of the number of absences or a, a, a little bit, a couple of absences that were problematic. And so we're working on that right now. I'm curious, so as we move forward in the year, let's say there is a building that has less number of students in that building. Um, so the need of maybe not needing the sub can, again. That's exactly what we're looking at. Okay. At, at the time we use that, to use, we use prior data to say these are why the buildings need subs. As we're looking at, you know, I know Dr. Mohorn and Dr. Lindeman, as we're looking at the data in the building and seeing, you know, hey, we, at some buildings we may have gone down to two teachers per grade level and all those other teachers are going virtual or moved to a different building because based on the numbers we would make need to make some determinations on whether or not the district sub uh, is feasible at the location okay thank you would it be something where if we got to the point where we're seeing the need in other buildings that we would be able to have a full-time floater then as well so that is what a district building sub is I mean to float to all different buildings. Do you see oh, what I'm saying? Yeah. Or is there just not a need for that? There's not a need for that yet. I, I honestly, I think that you know, um, Lyle's question before is more kind of ever present in my mind as far as okay, if if this is working, do we need more? I mean, yeah. we're going to look at it from the budget standpoint and make sure it right. works. I, I'm not saying that the idea isn't workable. It's just I, one of those things where it's just one of a balance. Well, be, and I ask, I guess, because you know we have to, there's so many leaves right now and i know then that also staff 
when they're out for the two weeks for quarantine, um, that kind of stuff, um, that we need a long-term sub, if that would be something that the district one would be used for or not. Yeah, it's definitely I mean, if it's not, but if, if we don't have one for that building. Could it be a floater as well? Yeah, okay. we can look at it. But I guess with all this conversation, I would I do not want to discourage our sub list. How many do we have on our, you know, like that we- Teacher-wise, about right. 100. Right. Yeah, about 100. And so that's where, I mean, to answer your question, and also to answer yours, it's just been two weeks. And so, you know, for us, we want to look at information over the course of a month, maybe even a quarter. And so we're not, we're, we're cognizant of maybe the immediate needs that are happening, but we also don't want to jump too quickly and then all of a sudden shift a, um, a position and need it in another building. So we're, if you're getting feedback, we're just waiting and seeing at this time, but we do know there's ever present situations that we need to find a solution for. So are those 100 not including the pairs who are getting the certification, right? That's correct. That's not including the pairs who are getting the certification. Okay. That's an additional 30. Okay. Oh, great. Okay. Thank you. Where are we at for pairs? Overall? Overall. <laughs> um, we're, we're short, shorter than I would like to be. Uh, we have a number of different positions that we need to fill. Now, both to India's question and to your question, um, you know, with the building need being less, at the, at the in-person level, that's helping our need not be as, as necessary, as I'm gonna say, as needed, but as necessary. And so we are looking at that. We're, we're trying to find out uh, whether or not we can find other avenues. I know that we've reached out to uh, our workforce and unfortunately they're still not available or open at this time to do interviews like we've done it before because we've just said hey are people available then we show up and provide in-person interviews at that time and so we're looking at other avenues where we can reach out and, and find some positions for people so is it that they're not applying for the job or or do we run into not being qualified or no like it's that? more about we we hit a we hit a note at the beginning of our our year where we had a significant amount i think i remember talking to you about hey everything feels really good right now and then we had eight pairs leave and so that would that's what doesn't feel good and so we have some need that's apparent right now just from two weeks ago that at the time i felt pretty good about it it's more about there's some concern overall with health and safety in general and I just wish that we would have had that conversation earlier in the summer months to plan effectively for it. So I think that's that's been the concern. So, so between uh, resignations, leave of absence, and retirements, I think there's 14 on the list here of pairs that are, are leaving. Some of them, it says the end of 1920. Are, th are these just post-dated or are these people that we that started 2021 this year and then resigned since that time yeah some when you say start some of them may let us know like that they weren't coming back so maybe they started on a leave or they were on a leave and then they decided you know after the first week of school hey you know what we're not coming back and so that's where you see that situation where you'll see a resignation at the end of 1920 because we we backed them up to the end of 1920 for the resignation but do so, we have so enough? I'm sorry, go ahead, Bob. I was just going to ask. So, the primary reason for so many on this list is, is again, that's the essence of my question is, is this new information to us, or were some of these expected, or both? Where are we at? Some of them are expected, and some of them are new information from what I was talking about as far as people kind of coming back or kind of not coming back and then saying, you know what, I don't want to chance it, I'm going to resign. Um, and so it's a little bit of both. Some people have already let us know and then they're just coming off a leave and maybe letting us know late. Um, but for the most, it's both at that, I mean, at this point. So it's, it is for the most part uh, health driven. A lot of it is. By health concerns. Yeah, a lot of it is. I mean, you have to understand that many of our paraeducators are, are working you know, very closely with our students. And so I think because of that, um, they're making decisions as far as what that looks like. And so we're going to be having some more conversations here shortly with departments, obviously buildings as well. I know there was an email not too long ago that was some follow up as far as, hey, we saw this person resigned. Can you give me some more information um, as far as why the concern was? Maybe we're able to get that person back in depending on the situation. 
So the environment of hiring new pairs, where are they? Are yeah. we having candidates that? We do have candidates for the positions at times. I think the, the problem is normally our push in our season is r really around the, the summer months. You know, we're dealing with situations now where our principals, I can think of one building in particular, just haven't had time to interview candidates. And so there's candidates applying for the positions, but they literally just have not had a second to actually go through the interview process um, in a timely fashion. And so we're gonna have to work through that. And I can, um, I can spend some time with the weekly update um, preparing some type of report as far as the true in and out and the reasons with our exit survey information as well. Uh, my concern then is, are there enough special needs paras in the buildings to fulfill what is legally required for IEPs and 504s? I mean, yes. I mean, at this time, yes. Okay. Now, the a reason why I hesitated on answering that is because I, I, we got to figure out and have a meeting about, okay, are we able to sustain? Can we get some people back in? I know that I just had a conversation with Director Gentry today about some needs at a couple of our buildings mm -hmm. and that, you know, there's a need of a BISP here and a need of a Special Education 101 para here. Yeah. And so from that standpoint, I can say yes because that generally happens over the course of the year or even the start of the year that we have positions moving in and out. Um, but let me get back to you on where we're at, not only from a special ed standpoint, but also from a general para standpoint as well. Are any of the paras working virtual only? No. Okay. Have you have no, had paras? I'm sorry, go ahead. No, the problem is it's always nuanced for an answer. No, not in the setting of our true all virtual, yes, as far as in one of our buildings, Expo, like the virtual program that they've always run, mm -hmm. there is somebody that's working virtual, one pair that's running for virtual. So I'm just curious, how do you handle those students who are special needs who are virtual? I mean, they don't need a para? Like, I don't know, maybe they don't. I'm gonna ask the, uh, the illustrious Dr. Moran to step up to oh. answer that question. <laughs> disadvantages of choosing virtual education is that the IEP had to change. So right. someone that may need a one-on-one -on -one para, that's not possible with virtual. And so there had to be an IEP meeting though, and that's the, uh, the special ed department is still working on having all of those IEP meetings with different students. And if we are fighting that there are students with special needs who virtual isn't working, then they are being allowed to come back to the building and have face-to-face -face instruction still. Got it, thank you. Yep. Wait a minute, what do you mean being allowed to come back to the building? They weren't told they couldn't. Oh, no, never, no. But they're, but they're granted, you, they can come back. You chose. Yeah, you chose. Yep. Right. That was the choice. Yep. You can go back and forth. Right, you can't say yeah. one week so I'm coming, we are. Week I'm not. That way. We're letting them come back as we wouldn't let a general ed student right. that chose virtual because they signed up for right. all virtual. Lyle, totally. there were timelines, and, yes. and if you go back to look at the, re, the return to learn okay. plan, um, okay. elementary students, we asked them to stick with virtual through the end of the trimester. Mm -hmm. And for um, secondary students, it was the end of, of the semester, so, but yeah. if it's not working for yeah. a student with an IEP, they can come back immediately. Because yeah. I, I thought that uh, the IEP had to be changed prior to them going virtual. Was that not the case? Well, <laughs> yes, it does, but yes. Yeah. In a perfect it world, does. it would have it, been. It does, and sometimes you're, you're having a conversation with somebody, okay, we're going to let you start, but we're going to yep. have your IEP meeting next Thursday. Yep. So there, yep. the timing is okay. a little off sometimes, mm -hmm. but the parents are always involved because and they're the ones who are making that and decision. There's always been, so yeah, there's schedule. been communication, but the official right. actual meeting, yeah. it might be on next Thursday or it might be to next Friday to signed. get yep to get the pages all yep where they need to be. But all the parents of I, students with IEPs were notified previously that if you have an IEP it may not work virtually, correct? Yes, yes the ro roster roster teachers contacted them and we have done something that other districts didn't necessarily do. We've allowed them to try virtual learning because we want to really be family friendly and we want to let our parents, if they really feel strongly that their students need virtual learning, for them to try it. For some parents, they've already realized this really isn't working. I want to come back face to face. And so that's what's happening. So is the, is the, is the percentage on uh, virtual 
for IEP students about the same as the population in general? I actually don't know that question on the, we, I know we have all of the numbers. I'm not exactly sure of the percentage of yep. that. So let me get back to you on that because we have around 15% of our students, I believe, mm -hmm. um, identified with um, IEP needs. We have hard numbers, but I don't, we don't know do, that we have I just, percentages. I would have we to do go have back and look at that, but I'm not exactly sure if that comes out to 15% mm -hmm. of all our virtuals. I mean, so I can see it both look. ways that on the one hand you would think there would be a greater percentage in person. On the other hand, you don't know the health situations mm -hmm. of any of those mm -hmm. with an IEP. Yeah. So yeah. Right. that percentage it could swing there, either way. Is there some you know, physical reasons they want to? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the need for closer contact. Yeah. You had want, you want a question? Yeah. Um, I, so do we still have a para sub list and how many oh, people are on? <laughs> on the para sub list? Because I know if you have a para then stepping up to teach a class, then you're losing that para who may be legally bound to be in that classroom. Or not that person, in, I just mean that there should be a para in that classroom. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, so our para sub list, I mean that's the one that fluctuates a lot because uh -huh. both the para subs both um, help with our paras and also our secretary um, positions as well. Oh, that's. Okay. I can't give you that number off the top of my head. I just know that I talked to the, about the teachers one. I can follow up with the email as far as where we're at on that. In general, when we have those situations where a para needs to step up in the class, the expectation is um, in that classroom that the teacher is providing some level of support with the minutes. Okay. That's why I could say to you confidently, yes, but it's not sustainable. And right. so, I mean, obviously we wrote the, I mean, we wrote the IEP and the plan right. to, to walk through instances where the teacher is providing SDI for a number of different students um, in the room. And so they'll need that additional support. So could it happen one or two days? Yes. Could it happen a month? No. And so right now, yes, but that's not sustainable. And so that's why I want to get back to you as far as what that looks like and what our, what our plan is as well. I'm sorry. I only have two more for you. Oh, of course. Okay. So. On the leave of absences, that has nothing to do with people who have to be out for COVID. Is that correct? That's correct. And so does a person, does a, a staff member have to apply for leave of absence is if they have been, if there's someone in their home then that may be positive as well? That's a good question. So no, they don't have to apply for a leave of absence per se. They do have to go through our FFCRA application process. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that we just want, because you can, we want to open up the opportunity of um, you using whatever leave that you feel comfortable with because some of it comes with full pay and some of it comes with two-thirds pay. Not to get into the, the detail of that, and we can, we can talk afterwards if you'd like, but with that, we want them to make a declaration to us that they're choosing that instead of, like, for example, if they're in need of potentially not um, having to work because of caring for another person, that's two-thirds pay, but you can use family illness, which is full pay. And so with that, they may make a determination that they'd rather use family illness and keep that FFCRA or vice versa. So that's where we want them to make a declaration to us in the, sign, in the form of an application to say, this is what I chose and this is what I've signed to choosing. And so they have to do that even if they feel like they've been infected by that person and they're quarantining? That's different. That's, that's, that's truly FFCRA. That's, well, okay. I, that's truly. That's truly full pay, and that is we go through a totally different process with that. And that doesn't count against their sick days then? Correct. Okay. Thank you, Kingsley. Yeah. So I will uh, make sure I get you something about um, special education, st um, staffing and minutes, paras, and also just some better guidance on the FFCRA and what we do. One, on a real positive I wanted to say, Kingsley, is that we, um, I know we get the emails daily, and I really appreciate the one that goes to all employees every day mm -hmm. that says, do not come to school mm -hmm. if you are sick. Mm -hmm. Do not come to work if you are sick. So I think that is awesome because that's a great reminder every single day, every single employee of the Waterloo School District, including board members, mm -hmm. get that, that do <laughs> not that. come to school if you are sick. And I think that is awesome. So well, thank you for doing that. Briefly, I'll just say with that, I just want to thank my team. They've done a tremendous job navigating it because it's, it's been tough. But also Dr. Lindemann, Dr. Mohorn, our DLT team, because 
I think that, and, and again, this is just because I got some calls from other districts as far as what your plan is and how you're running it. Can we incorporate it? And I would say we've given a wealth of options to families, almost to a fault. Um, but we've given, I, I could say right now out of the UENs, we've given the most options for families. And so just want to give kudos to everybody here because while it, it means a lot of work, I, I, I feel like as a parent as well, it's giving you a wealth of cho choices and options to be able to navigate what this looks like. He was going to say that for his board comments. And yeah, just seriously. <laughs> we haven't even got there yet that people are already stealing each other's lines. So, all right. All those in favor then of approving the personnel appointments, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, same sign. Chair votes aye. Motion carried. That takes us to item C then, which is bills due and payable. And the recommended motion is the Board of Education approve the bills due and payable and the bills paid between board meetings. And a second? Second. Thanks, India, and discussion. So I, I pulled this just for two quick reasons. I saw that we're, you know, Durham's back on there. Um, how are things going with that, with them turning in their, their what was it, like their timesheet or their bill? They weren't, invoices. we were having some invoices. So we were having some issues with that. Is um, is that resolved this year? Michael, can you hear, did you hear that question? I did hear that question. Awesome. The, um, the bill to Durham on there is for summer school transportation. Okay. So it's not involving the regular school year and we are currently in discussion with Durham now that we have started school and there's less routes than we had last year, obviously. And they have some requests to review the <clears throat> conditions of the contract. So we are, Kingsley and Marty and I are just starting that conversation with Durham um, in the next few days. Okay, is, is, is Durham able to staff their routes? To this, to this point, what we know is that they have drivers for all of the current routes and four extra. Okay, thank you. And then my second one was just, you know, there's a lot of the, the building costs, you know, you see itemized in there. Are those all wrapped into what we got for bids or is this money that's not what we, like, is that money that's not going towards like Lowell or is it part of something that we already had a bid in and then it just comes in as, as the bill what as they is, have the bill. <laughs> like, what are what you it, specifically? Yeah, Do you I, have a specific, hang on, Michael. specific yeah. line? Yeah, item? there's there's several where it's um, page number. Okay, I didn't read. Bring reading glasses. Oh. Give me a second. You can put it on your screen and blow it up. <laughs> um, so like. had a bunch of them so there's the envision architecture um, it's on page 13 right yeah that one and the, on 10 and, um, one and then there's another one for that um, and then there's uh, failure Hurley construction one for 14,000 on page 10 um, the Ferguson Enterprises is that a construction one as well or is that different? Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, then Freed Construction on page ten. There's eighty six thousand. Um, that was the Kingsley roof. Oh, okay. Yep. See, he could tell you exactly. <laughs> okay. So, but so all the stuff basically that we that comes in from different constructions, if they were part of an um, a bid that was already put in those are already expected costs and then they it won't cap that correct like it won't go above what the bid was for is that correct unless we have a change order right what i'm sorry yeah, change order like they come to the board with a change order that oh, something right. is going to but cost we would more. have to approve that yeah okay got you thank you but there's or less or yeah less. sometimes it's if less we sometimes we if it's significantly off of what the budget was what is the number if it's, it's 
10 percent 10 10 off of what over under then it comes to the board or comes to back actually to comes us. to the facilities committee first but then it comes to the board to vote on all change orders so that we can and it's a signal to the board that it's different from what was originally approved yeah. well, some, of the, some stuff is, is not stuff the change we, order limit is five thousand. Mm -hmm. okay it's not oh, a yeah, percentage sure. it's a dollar, dollar amount. Amount. and okay. that's dollar. plus or minus correct michael correct yeah oh yeah and there's like a the whopper to larson for yeah. six hundred and nine thousand, and that's low correct yeah okay no, no, some stuff we'll just never see anyway. I mean, as far as you know, it got to get to a certain dollar amount, but we got to yeah. approve it anyway. Some of it's just business yes, Michael. normal. Um, just for a reference to the board, on page 13, that last little section of bank account 16, yes, mm -hmm. that is the saved dollars. Okay. So that would be the Lowell demo demolition, okay. the full project, and finishing up um wcc so it's only the big projects that come out of save um the other construction um amounts most of those are coming out of pepple yep. and that's on that list that marty goes through with the facility committee and yes if it is a significant amount we do get bids and um, but that is all planned projects through marty's office and um that's all coming out of capital money. Right, like the roofing project that we know, we know those roofing projects well ahead of time. Correct. And now looking at that, like Blackhawk T County Treasure, would that be, because um, we wouldn't pay property taxes, what would, would be they permits or oh, what would that permits. be? Pages that on. 13. 13, Michael. Thank you. within the save the uh, bank number 14 16. first line item Part of save and um, no I'm not exactly sure what it is but it's that sounds probable some kind of a permit with the city but I can find out and or with the county I'm sorry um, I can find out and let you know no that's, okay. I just saw that thank you <laughs> all right Okay, then all those in favor of approving the bills due and payable and bills paid between board meetings, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, same sign. Chair votes aye, motion carried. That takes us then to item D, which is the donation uh, from the McElroy Trust. And the recommended motion is that the Board of Education accepts with gratitude the donation in the amount of $7,500 from the RJ McElroy Trust for the 2020 2021 youth emergency fund as presented so move so, second thank you jesse and or and asked her first and then jesse and as i said earlier i just pulled this to i will need to abstain from this vote and i want to thank you michael for giving us um that breakdown of the schools and um because obviously looking at this sheet right now we're seeing okay these schools got zero but why did they get zero so i appreciate that and um also i just want to thank the McElroy Trust for um, if you would take that back Shanley because um, um, it's just a wonderful thing that we can have this at our disposal for every building and if there is a problem with you know they find a family in desperate need <coughs> they will help them and I really appreciate the trust for stepping up to do that because um, those extra dollars aren't always there so thank you Thanks, Sue. I'll be sure and take that back to the my trustees. Um, and the other thing I would say is that we try to start the year with $500 for the elementary schools and then 1000 for the high schools and the middle schools. And certainly, as you said, throughout the year, if there's stuff that comes up, it's really, there's, not, there's no limit. It's just, and Jeff uh, Sommerfeld uh, works really well with our executive director in, in asking for more funds if necessary. So, How often do the schools, I was just reading the last line where it says we do not add to the funds at those schools that still have a substantial balance how often do we have a they schools have a balances i would say mm, maybe six or seven of them at the end of the year have okay. a balance okay. and then but generally some of them will have a balance because they asked for we had um some that asked for some funds in the spring mm -hmm. and then they didn't get spent Got because it. we we you know Even were more. closed down and michael sent us that breakdown that showed 
which What's one left? had balance. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you. Yep. Are these funds generally used by the family support workers or the counselors or I mean, is it a building or a principal? Is it just? Yep, all the above. No specific? No specific they're person. Earmarked. They're not okay. earmarked. And they also, they do come with a set of guidelines. So um, what they, you know, what they'd like to see them spent for, et cetera. But they really do pretty much use them at their discretion. And they provide then, um, still privately, they provide the information of what was spent, not, not and how, but not to whom, back to the McRoy Trust just as that. So that happens too, as a double check. It's not mine. It's not mine. Who's <laughs> making it you? So anyway. <laughs> So I'll take the I'll take those thanks back to them and and that's the the reason why I asked her it was intended was to just be really for whatever yeah you know, within reason I mean yeah. yep whoever needs it mm -hmm. so, so um, is there anything further then all those in favor of approving the donation from the McElroy Trust please signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. and those opposed same sign. Chair abstains. With great gratitude. <laughs> With great gratitude. And the motion carried. Thank you. Um, that'll take us then to item E, which is on page 18. Um, and this recommended motion is that the Board of Education approve the agreement between the Waterloo Schools and the Cedar Falls Community School District for the 2020 2021 school year as presented. So moved. And a second? Second. And discussion. Thank you, Sue and India. Um, so coming in, I, I don't know what the, the Cedar Falls PLTW is, that program. Project so if I could just, the that's the project lead the way. So we have a, a student who will be going there for their project lead the way. Is that what's happening? Right. You're not. Okay. There it is. Hi, Stacy. Hi. So that is, um, any of the CAPS courses? We have a 28E agreement with them so that we have kids going there to take classes and then they come to our buildings to take classes. Okay. And this was a course that we used to have, but since that time we haven't had staff at the high schools to offer it. So we opened that agreement up for that one CAPS course that's similar. It's an engineering, intro to engineering course over at Cedar Falls. It was great at West. I, I mean, know. It's the <laughs> we got rid of it. Like, well, we, it. And I we, will say just talking to Jeff Frost, we have so many more engineering entrepreneur courses now at the Career Center, that it's sort of fading itself out. It was unique at the time, but now we have so much more to offer. But yeah, it's a lovely course. Thank you. And mm -hmm. can I get like a list of acronyms? <laughs> so I'm not always asking this stuff. You will ask that for the next <laughs> 30 years, right? Yep. I mean, it's, there are so many acronyms. It's I've actually, Pam actually has a list that we started because when I started on the board yeah. <clears throat> forever ago, um, I said the same thing. We have so many acronyms. Right. So she's got a pretty good list. I so would love question, that. Do you have and a list so and retired list acronyms? Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> there's so much new that comes that it, We'll keep adding to it. We'll, we'll put, put it in PT, the, uh, the, the weekly update. PTL. Is that it, so Stace? Okay, yeah. yep. Sharice, real quick. PLT. Yeah. How many students do we have signed up the same program. who are enrolled, who are going? To take just that one. one course. It's just one. Just one. Oh, we do have one. It was only one student. It's just one. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. And normally we wouldn't have because if we both if we both have that course, mm -hmm. obviously we're not going to share that student. Right. And Got we it. just didn't have the staffing to offer it this year. Thank you. Yep. yep. All right. Then all those in favor of approving the agreement between the Waterloo Schools and the Cedar Falls Community School District, say, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, same sign. <clears throat> Chair votes aye. Motion carried. That takes us then to item F, which is on page 20. And this recommended motion is the Board of Education approve the contract service agreement between Tri-County Child and Family Development Council Incorporated and the Waterloo Schools for the 2020-2021 school year. So moved. Thank you, Jesse. And a second? Second. Thank you, Sue. And discussion. And I know Dr. Shar is here, so she can come forward. And I don't know who pulled this item. I can't remember. Maybe. I didn't. 
I have I have questions. So. Okay, we'll go for it. <laughs> and discussion. Let's go. Uh, number one, is this in person? Yes. Hundred mm percent -hmm. in person. Yes. Okay. And is the number of students more or less than last year? Uh, actually, it's six less. It's what? It's a little six bit. Less. Six, mm -hmm. less. six less. Okay. And where does this money come from? Uh, it's a federal grant, and our local grantee is Tri-County Child and Family Development Council, Inc. So the $5,000 a year, $5,084 a year uh, per student, is that covered by the grant or 100%? Basically. Yeah. It says here we got a 1% decrease from last year. Actually, it's uh, increased because we're going to serve less of their students. Because we're six fewer right. students. So in, even though the uh, total amount might be less than last year, it breaks out to more. <coughs> Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Okay. Sorry, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. <laughs> right. So this is about $11 per hour per student per right. day, yeah. uh, which is about the same, I think, as we run as a, as a school district overall. Uh, so the key then is attendance. So, so do you know what our attendance, what the attendance normally is? In other words, if you have 174 kids, are there 70 show up or 170? Well, we follow the same guidelines as Waterloo schools with the 96% expectation, and we try to hit that. And also Federal Head Start, they have uh, ex expectations as well. So we do a good job. But so we can get you, you know, exact numbers. I can get you the exact numbers. Water, so it's 90% 90, so it's 90 plus, you think? Yes, sir. Okay. Easily. All right. And in typical years, don't you even have a wait list for students that want to get in? We try not to keep a big wait list, but yes, maybe 10 or less. Mm -hmm. yep. yep, so we yeah. can replace. I, I've known students that tried to get in a couple years ago. Yeah. And so what are the locations currently? Oh, wow, we have them all over, so let me just get that. We serve them at Cunningham, Becker, Elk Run, Highland, Irving, Kitchell Early Childhood Center, Lincoln, and Orange. So that's six. So there's about... Uh, 30 kids, 30 kids, 25 to 30 kids at each location. So it's like one class? No, they're integrated. So they're s dispersed throughout several classrooms. So like at Orange, if we just have three classrooms, then maybe it's 16, 18 slots there and they're dispersed. You know, we serve Head Start and Voluntary Preschool. Right. So it's not all just Tri-County in one space. No. How, how is this different than the voluntary preschool? Like, is it, are we offering different programming? Is it no. different, nope. are we aiming Same. at different family? Like, yeah, I mean, social economic need. Okay. So we want to serve the families that are most in need. Right. Head Start is a two generational approach to ending poverty. So these families have to qualify. They're in dire poverty at 100% of the poverty federal guidelines. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same program that's yeah. being delivered no matter which class they're in. It's just, and I don't think, Dr. Seth, correct me if I'm wrong, but no one really knows. I mean, it's not like you walk into this classroom and you know this is a voluntary pre-K kid, this is a Tri-County Head Start kid, this is a, right. they're just, they're, all they're just all there getting, they're all pre-K kids that's getting right. there. The haves go with the have-nots. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Which we hope yeah, will eventually IEPs, meet everyone's haves. All of it. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Um, and so my last question, um, so does Head Start then own the Elk Run Early Childhood Center or is that a Waterloo Schools? We, we it's a Waterloo it. Schools location it. that may be hopefully coming offline pretty soon. It's mm -hmm. an older well, building. I, yeah. <laughs> I was just reading, you know, that it, Head Start provides classrooms at the Elk Run Early Childhood Center. That we was. have two three-year-old classrooms in our district. We don't serve three-year-old students unless they have an individual oh. education plan, which is known as IEP. So they have yeah, yeah. two rooms there that we they have so we can have inclusion opportunities for our students that have IEPs that are three years of age. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. So are there real, are there? Oh, okay. 
Yeah. That's just where they're housed. Okay. So. so are there rooms in the new uh, Lowell Pre-K building yeah. uh, accommodate any of this? <laughs> Yeah, we, we actually have not designated which classrooms, which teachers will be in there, but we do actually had a conversation about it today. So we're starting to have that dialogue about which classrooms will go where. Um, and I think that will be decided over the next, you know, six, eight months. So we're, we're anticipating uh, the Waterloo District providing some we will continue to work with Head Start where they'll be housed. I don't know. It could be at the new center. It could be somewhere else. We, we're, as, as Dr. Uh, Sadath mentioned, we're, we're looking at all the classrooms that are at Elk Run to determine where they might be. So that is the task du jour. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for explaining things to me, Dr. Sedeth. I really Thank appreciate you. it. And Absolutely. for what you do. Thank Absolutely. you so much. And I apologize. I called you Dr. Shar, but that's because we go way that, back. That's the handle, Dr. Shar. I know, Thank but so I much. should have called you Dr. Sedeth. Pardon it, it, me. All, so, okay. No. Thank you. And it's nice to I see you. I just have to Good. say, I hardly recognize you. You look tremendous. You look so oh, great. Thank you. Thank so. you. Have a good evening. <laughs> all right. You be well. Thank you. Yeah. All right, then all those in favor of approving the Tri-County Family Development Council Incorporated uh, Service Agreement, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, same sign. Chair votes aye, motion carried. So that concludes our consent agenda. We'll move on then to item G, which is on page 33. And uh, the recommended motion here, this is a board policy change. And the recommended motion is that the board approve the following policy standardized dress code. And I will ask that uh, Tara Thomas come to the table. Um, but can I get that motion on the uh, on the board, please? So moved. Thank you, Stacy. In a second. Second. Thank you, Jesse. And discussion. As we talked about, if I don't mind, I'm just going to jump in. We talked about just truly. This is just truing up our language, removing a few things. Mm -hmm. um, that were not really relevant any longer to our policy and that we talked about looking at a standardized dress code, some changes perhaps in the future, but maybe not the second and third week during a pandemic school year. So, <laughs> so correct. that's what's before you. So since we did not have, we rescheduled the um, policy committee meeting so we didn't really get a chance to talk about that. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, so with that said, we really haven't been able to talk about some changes with the dress code right. at, at this point. And so with the second reading, I feel like maybe we, could we wait until we meet and talk about, I know that about the changes for the dress code or we're just voting tonight for the second read for some of these changes? We're just voting to true up the policy that we currently have. And mm -hmm. then I think the revisiting of the entire dress code thing would, would be a separate, as, as I would see it, it would be a separate item that would come before student services and perhaps a combination of Tara's department. And, but I, I didn't know that y'all didn't meet, so I don't, I don't have your meeting schedule. Yeah, why, why didn't we? No one explained why we didn't have it. There weren't any policies brought forth with updates, so there would be no agenda. But I thought that the point of the policy review is that every time that there's that, like you go through the whole policy over, mm -mm. A, like a every time there's yeah, one. that's a good question. The the policy review every five years policies need to be re-upped re or re, re yeah. renewed, and so there's a cycle of those. And so yeah. when those, so yeah. we we get a list once a year. They start with um, all of the lists that needs to be reviewed during that year that would expire during that year. And so as directors or whoever are looking at those, they bring those forward to the policy review because that's the next line of, that's the next in the chain. So the policy review looks at it and then it comes here for first reading and then a second reading. If there aren't that any that have been um, reviewed and are ready for the policy review to, to bring forward and put forward, then there's if there's nothing, then you don't meet. So. The policy reviews committee, their agenda is, or their, their mission is to be the first step on renewing those policies. Does that make sense? So we only look at one when, so we have a set agenda throughout the year of, of what needs to get done, but we only look at it when someone else brings it to us? 
So there's a yes. list that goes out every month, and it has a breakdown of every single policy and the year that it's up for review. So for example, there might be 200 for the year of 2020. Each policy is then designated to a department head. Mm -hmm. He or she makes changes or reviews it and determines there are no changes, and then it comes before you and the rest of the policy review committee meeting once they give it to our department, in this case, Sandy Lanigan, to put on the agenda. So some sometimes, in the case of recent weeks, because there has been so much other work for some of the department chairs, they have not found the time to review and make all of the edits, so they can't bring it forth yet to the policy review committee until such time as that process is completed on their end. So if a, a head of a tar department doesn't see that anything needs changed, it doesn't come to us at all? We don't, no, we don't look it, at it and it, say, okay. It still does. Everyone that's up for review would come to you, and it would either have suggested changes or no change. So many of the items on the agenda, and I don't know how many in your inclusion up to this point, this has been the case, but it will often say no change. Right. So it's still coming before you and giving you and the other committee members the opportunity to suggest changes like what India is speaking of in regard to dress code, because even though this one isn't up for review at any time, we can revisit and review a policy. So in this case, student services, Marla Paget brought this forth right. when it wasn't necessarily up for review. Yeah, because if you look at the right. last page, they always show adopted and reviewed. Mm -hmm. So like this was reviewed in 10, 12, 13, 14, 17. So it has been reviewed multiple times oh, yeah. when some Outside policies of the five are year review, window. reviewed yeah. every right. five years yeah. and that's it. Okay. Right. But if we see something that we want to bring right. forward, we don't have to wait for Correct. the right. department. Yeah, okay. you could just let Sandy know she would tell you which department holds that policy okay. and then that individual could review it and join us at an upcoming meeting to mm -hmm. talk about any potential changes. Thank you, Tara. No problem. And I would say, I guess there were just three of us on the board when the initial dress code was oh, established, right. Lyle, Shanley, and I. And that wasn't just a process of like changing wording in oh. a um, policy. It was, community input it was you know and i think that would be wise again to do that yeah, but that has to be spearheaded input. by someone and has to bring it up and and then it goes through review and it comes here and it you know so i i think it's not as simple as just saying let's look at the policy and change it i mean no, that would be my process. perspective on yep. that and it, that's basically what I was saying, India, is that not that we can't address it for right. sure, but just that this piece is really not addressing the entire, it's, it Correct. was just bringing up, truing up some of the, the verbiage, um, but then a deeper dive into that would, I think, require a lot more <laughs> back and forth more and information. information. Yeah. We had a large committee that, I mean, it was a, it was, it was a long process. And we <laughs> sat at board meetings for hours and hours. <laughs> 11 o'clock at night listening to people talk hours. about dress code. So um, it's not like we can do it. <laughs> well, okay. interesting enough, because this really wasn't a policy change until someone sent some emails about. So I just want to be clear, like we did make some changes very quickly because people referenced the gang related inf information and we were on it. So I want to have that same type of energy when we come and talk about the dress code. So. Yes. Thank you, India. And if it's not the whole dress code, just, yes. just a bits piece. and pieces of it, it, maybe it wouldn't take that long. Right. That's Correct. true. It could and just the board be a few. Can vote no, though, yeah. if we if we if it got brought up and they didn't. Yep. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. If we're all in agreement of looking at it at yeah. least, so for sure. Well, sooner, no, India, that's a great later. point. That that was. Mm -hmm. We have to be flexible to do it that so way. So can I ask who brought that up? You. Or who, I mean, the gang who, related? Yeah, to Tara. Did someone bring Actually, it up? Actually, there were community we, emails that were sent out regarding that, and mm -hmm. it, that we brought it to the attention of Marla, and we talked about it at, okay. at, um, policy, yeah. at the policy meeting. Am I correct? Yes. I think the, the emails came before we even, the emails came from mm -hmm. community members. Yes. Probably right. May, maybe. I think we all got them. Mm -hmm. um, and then we mentioned it quite a bit later. With Marla, she received the same emails. Yeah, okay. if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So she was on it before 
we I don't remember those, it. India. I think I'm excluded mean, from email lists. I don't. I, I don't remember getting that. That's why I'm. Really. We got two. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, we got yeah. I thought everybody okay. was attached to it. Mm-hmm. No, I'll but pull that's them okay. up quick. I mean, it. Yeah. You got it, and we addressed it. Yeah, so. we did. Absolutely. So, okay. And I don't, if I remember right, I don't believe India. Correct me. I I don't think either one of the emails were from somebody local, but they were addressing our policy. I believe one was from California, and one was from. They were national emails. I don't think any. It was anybody from the community. Got it. Okay. <laughs> but this is something that's been spoken about in the community as well. It wasn't just because right. of those two emails. No. All right, thank you, Tara, appreciate that. No problem. All right, then all those in favor of approving the standardized dress code, um, the following policy, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, same sign. And chair votes aye, motion carried. So is the second that, reading it? Or yep, yeah. yep, the first reading no, and then the second or no vote. Um, all right, so then that takes us to item H, which is on page 39, and this is the Legal Services Engagement Agreement. And the recommended motion here is that the Board of Education approve the Legal Services Engagement Agreement with Ehlers Cooney PC of Des Moines for the Lowell Elementary Construction Project. So moved. And a second? Second. Thank you, Jesse. This comes out of facilities, but I will also um, turn it over to Michael Coughlin if there are questions regarding this tonight. This is just for our financing, geo bonds, all that. Are these different? Did we get new lawyers or are these the same lawyers? Michael, did you hear that? No. Uh, India asked if these were new lawyers or uh, returning lawyers or yeah. current that we've already worked with. Yeah, they are returning. Yeah. Uh, they are the principal law group that deals with bond issues in the state. Um, and they have for years and years. I think I've worked with Beth Grove over 20 years myself. Uh, so she is the authority of of, of schools and bond so definitely a return from um, a good very good source yeah we've used them in my estimation I think the entire time I've been on the board I don't know Lyle do they go back as far as you I think so okay <laughs> and, and the role is a bond counselor basically okay. in, in this you know they're attorneys but they're they're honing in on the bond aspect of this. No, I feel like we have had a lot of lawyers in regards to Lowell. So that's why I'm like, is this a new one? So nope, that's nope. Just these asking. guys are the bond guys. These are the bond yeah. guys. Okay. Bond lawyers. Bond lawyers. So. <laughs> Not the ground lawyers or the <laughs> building lawyers. Exactly. So, All right. Then all those in favor of approving the recommendation for the legal services engagement agreement with Ehlers and Cooney, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, same sign. Chair votes aye, motion carried. That takes us then to exhibit I, which is on page 48, I'm sorry, 46. And the recommended motion is that the Board of Education approve the resolution fixing the date of sale of approximately 25 million <coughs> uh, school infrastructure sales, service, and use tax revenue bond series 2020 and approving official statement. So moved. Thank you, Jesse, and a second. Thank you, Sue. And discussion. You're fine. <laughs> it's all good. Um, Michael, I know you're on the phone here. If anybody has anything, um, again, this is just setting the date for the sale of these infrastructure bonds. So, yeah. yep. It's just setting the date of the sale and just that the board sees and reviews the official statement, the 40 pages that are following there, um, this is the document that goes to the investors to tell them who we are and what we're doing and what our financial condition is. So it is uh, important that all of you see that and 
um, because this is the statement of who we are. Do you know what our bond rating was? No, that hasn't been established yet. They are in, they are in process right now. Um, one of the things that they are waiting for is our enrollment numbers. Because, because of COVID, enrollment numbers have been fluctuating across the state, and they want to see a more solid number from us before they set that. And that's what Jane and uh, many others have been working on as far as getting something timely to them before sale date of the 28th. But we won't have an official number until after the 28th. So will they take uh, what we have in hand at the moment? They will take what we have in hand. And that's we should relatively really positive. By the 20th. I mean, we, I, um, Michael actually asked me that uh, last week. He called me to check that through. And, and I said, I think we'll be within a dozen by that time. And he said, close enough. So that'll be, yeah. They wouldn't want us to be off by hundreds or a thousand, but we should be close. So. Okay. And I, I thought I really appreciated all the information provided in there, um, Michael. Obviously, by law, you have to. But on page 78, um, with the historic tax rates, I, I really appreciated that um, just to go through the last five years and to see how we have been um, very um, efficient with our dollars and our portion has not gone up the school portion since 16 and I mean the overall tax revenue late levy rate is um, gone down pretty much for the most part a little up there and then downswing but the school's portion has lowered each time so I just wanted to bring that out because um, lots of people sometimes say oh schools part so high but you're dealing with, you know, if you look at the college next to that Hawkeye Community College, and that has basically gone up every year. So I, I think um, we are being very prudent with our dollars, and kudos to our financial department here at the district. Absolutely. Thanks, Sue. I hope you caught that, Michael. She was giving you some kudos. <laughs> I think it's very interesting to read through that. and. Well, see a five-year trend or so and uh, I think it speaks well of what we've been doing what we've all been doing with this so and another proud point I thought was our our facilities I mean you know basically looking through there um, we've had new facilities just about every single year you know working on um, or um, improvements at each facility and you know with a, a new building you know I remember when Cunningham was like the new school and that was 18 years ago wow. so Crazy. and it's still I you know whenever I go through Cunningham I think it's in good shape what was the date on Elk Run I didn't see a date next to it there yeah maybe because nothing has been done out yeah. there you know mm -hmm. from original yeah 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 in terms of massive what is it, when did when did it open? You went up. I'd have to go look at the pick. I don't know. It is on the board out here. That's why I said I'd have to go out and look at my cheat sheet. I don't know. So. So just as a follow up, <laughs> this on the twenty eighth of September uh, is the board the bond sale, and that will happen earlier in the day. And I'm anticipating Tim Oswald to be here that day and that he will present uh, to the board that night to just review any questions before the final before the bid is accepted by the board right that's what i was going to ask you to just outline our next our next time frame and that is on the 28th then to accept the sale of the bond the correct. bid okay and those and those bids won't come in until that day correct correct they will come in that morning that morning Keep your fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We want rates Positive. to. Yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned this is interesting reading uh, for everybody. I'm sure it is, but uh, <laughs> the this would be actually good as we put a finance course in that uh, yep. at our career center. This is yep. like finance 102, probably not not 101. 
<laughs> but I mean, and even, you know, like when we talk of different budgets and, and, and um, expenditures for the yeah. district, when you look at the interest rates, which, you yeah. know, we, I mean, in 2021, the interest alone would be almost 3.4 million, the interest. Yeah. So, yeah. But the whole concept of bonding would be appropriate. Right. For yes, it would. Exactly. For a finance class, for sure. Mm -hmm. I might sit in on that refresher as well. So, <laughs> all right. Thank you, Michael. We appreciate all the information you provided to us this evening. So, you're welcome. All right. Then, all those in favor of approving the resolution, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, same sign. Chair votes aye. Motion carried. Those conclude our action items for this evening. So I will turn it over to Dr. Lindemann for her superintendent's report. Yeah, just a few things tonight. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, just a, a reminder that you know we are we have three weeks under our belt, and starting the fourth week, so three weeks and one day um, under our belt. And I know you know districts across the state of Iowa. Some have chosen to go hybrid. Some have chosen to. Um, you know, file for applications to not not go at all as far as in person. Um, so I I just I guess just a couple of comments after three weeks of of our return to learn plan. First of all, it continues to be something that we are reviewing and um, using as kind of this blueprint and our steps going forward. And so I I feel like um, I feel like we should be really proud of the work that we have brought forward with the return to learn plan. I think it's gone remarkably well. Um, I really would, would toss some, some thanks to, huge thanks to our staff who are the ones who are in the rooms, you know, working with our students and, and making this work. It is not easy times for anyone. So, um, and then, you know, I guess, you know, we should also thank our students and our families too, because there's just, it's not an easy time for anyone. So I'm just, I'm super proud of the work that we've brought forward. I'm really proud of the way that we're implementing it um, and what everybody is doing. We have said very often that the, all of the decisions that we make are steps to keeping our kids in school, keeping that in-person option open. We know some have not chosen that and that's okay. Um, but for those who did choose in-person, um, I'm one of those moms who chose in person and I just I'm really proud of the of the work that we're doing I had a conversation with someone uh, About the the wristbands that we are doing for some of our athletic events and the person was questioning and said tell me more about why we would choose to to limit people coming in to sporting events and I said, you know it really is because with mass number of people you just can't employ the the strategies that you're trying and I know it's inconvenient I think everything that we're doing is you know can be seen as inconvenient because it's not business as usual but I also really <clears throat> excuse me applaud the work that is being done you know all over the district and so I I had Friday I took actually quite a bit of the day to do walkthroughs in different buildings and um, had a chance to, you know, see some work that, you know, see really remarkable work happening, really good lessons happening, good instruction happening, was also able to see a few places where I think we can tweak a few things. And so we have, um, we're doing something, uh, Kingsley and Stephanie and I, and I believe Marla Pageant, but the four of us are, are doing something that we're calling classroom audits, starting this, this, and it's really classroom arrangement audits. And so we will be going out, um, we've each been assigned, I believe five buildings. And so we will be going out and kind of dipsticking classrooms and, and walking through and looking at, you know, 10 to 15 classrooms, kind of randomly picking them and then taking pictures of the room arrangements. And is there something we could do better to make sure that we're socially distancing? It's really a pretty big commitment in time, but it's really the right work. So, um, and that, and then we'll, you know, we'll come back to the committees. We'll look at that. We'll look at our return to learn plan. Is there something we need to modify? Maybe we haven't communicated well enough, where, you know, or maybe we just need to hear what you know the teachers are saying about this works and this didn't work. And so, um, now that we've got a few weeks under our belt, those are just those next steps. So I just, I really, really want to thank everybody who has, you know, not only had a, a say in the plan before. It, was written or during while it was being written but also the people who are working so hard to make sure we're keeping our kids safe so um, just a note about enrollment I did put something in the weekly update we are really gearing up to look at two groups we're looking at our in-person students and making sure that we've got all of them enrolled and and that they're here we are missing a few kids that we're you know continuing to call and making sure that we get them in school 
Um, and then for our virtual students, we are keeping tabs. You know, the public might be interested to know that we, because we're, we're um, the online is truly an online software that we're using, we can keep track of exactly how many kids log in, when, how often, how long. Um, so we have really good records and, and um, Dr. Mohorn is, is taking a lead, her department is taking a lead on that virtual. So it's, it's, it's a lot of work and there's a lot of newness to it, but um, we're learning a lot. Uh, we started this morning working on kind of rehoning uh, our strategic plan and really looking at what parts of our strategic plan really need to be lifted up right now um, to get us through this, we, we call it surviving and thriving um, through this COVID year. And so uh, one of the things that was brought up, even just at our meeting today, somebody was talking about the fact that we really need to be measuring and monitoring how things are going right now because some of the things we're doing right now will become status quo for the way that we go forward. There's certain things that we've been pushed into but they actually are gonna be better. And so we're measuring and monitoring and saying, you know, this might be the, you know, life has changed in education probably forever. And so we need to be really tracking what's going on. So those are some of the things going on. And then I will, um, you know, I, I appreciate the questions about policy process and so I'll try to put something in the weekly update but just maybe to kind of the, that process um, there's like a, a four-step process to bringing policies to you as you guys know the board is our policy you are executive or you're the legislative branch right you are you are creating policy for us so when a need for a policy is expressed or the policy is up on its timeline. That's how things come before you. So that expression of needing to look at it could become, it could come from our community. It could come from a, a staff member, it could come from a principal who says, have we looked at that policy? It really doesn't reflect what we do or what we should be doing anymore. Um, so that, that need can come forward in a variety of ways. And then after it does that, we look at the department who, um, who kind of owns that policy. So if it's about student services, then we bring it back to student services and then the administration in charge of that would take, they would be the second branch. So they would kind of look at that and they would make recommendations that come forward to the policy review, which is kind of that third step. Policy review looks at it and sometimes that is a back and forth process. Sometimes the policy review, um, you know, thinks we'll take this back and look at that. We don't really feel like we could bring that forward. So it kind of goes back and forth. Sometimes it's a no change recommendation because it's only being brought forward because the time is expiring on it. So once it does that, and then it comes to you guys for two readings. So I, I just thought that might be interesting to just recap that. So I've, I've, when your question was, um, you know, why can it come forward? I thought that's a, that's a good question. It can come forward for a lot of reasons. One of which is because it's time to do that. And the others are, you know, we have all kinds of things that we look at and we said that, that just, that policy doesn't fit anymore. So anyway, I just thought I would mention that too. So thank you. Jane with you as far as the online how is it looking like you said you can tell exactly who's logging on and so how is the attendance of online going <laughs> so we are still working on that um, actually we we're getting better at all kinds of things and so at one point in time dr. Mohorn actually had a list of everything and she was you know starting to highlight and then we found out that we can download it and convert it over to a spreadsheet, so we've got all of that, so we can really slice and dice the, di the data. And so we're looking at that. We do, have, we do have students who have not logged on yet, so we are okay. making personal one-on-one -on -one phone calls, emails, texts, whatever we need to do, um, and offering, you know, in some cases, walking them through that. You know, are you sitting in front of your computer? Okay, look at the upper left-hand corner, click here, and just walking people through it because it can be overwhelming. It's a new system. We're using Edgenuity, and you know a lot of a lot of our students have never used it before, and so it can be overwhelming. And so we're really trying to do what we call customer great customer service and walking people through it. So I know Stephanie. I don't know if there's anything you would want to add on that. I don't want to leave anything out, but I know she was just talking about um, they're really digging into to that now that kids should have logged in by now. They really should have logged well, in. We have a lot of kids construction who already, and that's and right. So at yep. what point do we have our Yep. internet truancy people well and there yeah. you're right and the law has yeah. the the governor's proclamation and house file i can't think of the number right now yeah. but um 2910 or what it is that that has been very clear that whether you are a virtual student or an in-person student you are a student and so the truancy rules would apply and so um, of course, we're trying to give the benefit of the doubt, and really, I think a lot of the people who haven't logged in is really because they've maybe had questions, and we want to make sure that they're getting their questions. 
answered the teachers who are leading virtual. I, I think to say that they are getting hundreds of emails every day would not be out of line. So they are working really hard just to get answers back to people. I, you know, I tried this, it didn't work, now what? Um, so we've got other people we're putting on that to make sure that we're getting, you know, we have reasonable amount of time. You know, you shouldn't email us and we shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't be days before you hear from us. It should be that day within 24 hours. So we're working really hard on that. So um, I, think there's, I think there's a variety of reasons why people may not have logged in. Um, so, you know, we're working through those, those questions, you know, we've got people call if yeah. if they yeah like the chain like yeah. okay there's a variety of things they could do the probably the very best thing they can do is um e they could email virtual at waterlooschools.org which is the website for that um all of the 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 kids have been assigned to a teacher so they would have gotten an email from their teacher so if they you know maybe they missed that so then go with the virtual or they could call their school you know, they're still, if they were at Becker, they're still a Becker student. They could call their principal just like they did when they were learning in person. And they can, they can walk that through and they can get them connected. Um, they can even transfer, you know. I mean, the person can stay on the line. Stay on the line, I'm going to transfer you to somebody who can help you. So um, probably any of the channels that they used prior to virtual, they can still use. But they can also use this the virtual at waterlooschools.org is a great way too. That's and great information, I think, because, uh, you know, if you are a parent and you are having problems, oh, please, yeah. please do this because it's critical, I mean, yeah. that you get your child logged on. And I would just like to add, too, because I've worked with some, as a funder in the community, I've worked with some agencies and organizations that we're reaching out as a district, not only um, to provide that IT piece, but also in native languages, et cetera, so that because th the language barrier can sometimes be difficult, not just the language of learning a computer, but the actual <laughs> language. So I, I just want to say that we're really, I feel like reaching out on a lot of levels to get that accomplished. So And so the yeah. ingenuity, is it in different languages? Edgenuity. Edgenuity. I think. <sighs> Edgenuity is just nope. in English right now, so... Um, I don't know if we're using any translators or anything like that. I'm not, I don't believe so. <coughs> Working, but as far as the direct instruction, I don't believe <laughs> that that's an option. So an ESL student would be, how would they be getting helped? Yeah. Uh, but the interpreter piece sometimes goes to the parent to help yeah. it to help get especially for some of our younger kiddos to get that connectivity etc going it's it's the parent connection to speak in the native language to say plug it in and go to this site and then once the students on the student has the support exactly so, so what's the expectation of the, the Waterloo district virtual teacher in terms of contact uh, mm -hmm. frequency and duration with each of the virtual students. Do you want to come up to the podium? Yeah. yeah, we actually worked really hard to hone in exactly because that's we wanted to make sure there was some consistency. So there are some guidelines for a virtual teacher. So yeah. as far as contact goes for our elementary, um, they are required to make contact every two weeks. Now it could be sooner, but at least every two weeks. Um, with their students and you'll have to know they have many more students some have 75 80 some have a hundred or more students so that so every 10 days they have to have to make contact and it can be sooner if parents are contacting sooner then that's okay too with our middle and high school it's every three weeks that they have to make um, a contact but again we have virtual teachers who are assigned 100 or 200 kids um, all of them have over a hundred students some have 200 students and so making a contact making contacts with parents is important but they're also I have one teacher who said I came to work the other day and I had 800 emails just from the day before that I needed to respond to so and so they're still working to balance that contacting parents because that's super super important contacting students because students reach out as well and answering the emails within the 24 hours, which was one of the, the expectations that we set up too, so that we don't have a parent sitting at home waiting. If it's a, I can't get on, what do I do next, where they have to wait for days. So that when you say like contact, it. do you mean like um, a Zoom contact? Or it's a Google Meet, yep, they use Google. Google. Meet. Yep. 
So yep. they may have divided them. So they may have, you know, they may have 15 log in on Monday and meet with them from nine to 10 mm -hmm. to have a conversation with them. And then they might meet because their instruction is coming from the Edgenuity. So mm -hmm. their lessons are going through. And so the teachers, so they may email them. They will get feedback from Edgenuity. They can log in and get support from a teacher on Edgenuity. They can click on the link and watch a lesson being taught. Mm -hmm. So they're getting a lot of support. So this is somebody just checking with them and saying, Aster, you're 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 signed up. Let me just check with you. How's it going? I noticed that you're you know you've only logged in one time. Yep. So those kind of those kind of conversations are happening. So it seems like an extraordinarily long time between required contacts. Is this consistent with what other districts are doing? You know, I'm I'm familiar with one other district and it's daily. Yeah. And our teachers, I mean, we, there's absolutely no way if you have 200 and I think it's seven kids on your roster that you could do a, a Zoom with them every day. No, but that becomes a staffing issue. Right, I was right. just gonna ask is, it, are, we not, are we not going to try to staff? We have virtual? been trying to staff, Kingsley can tell you, I bother him probably all day, every day with, I mean, that we yeah. talk about virtual staffing every single day. Okay. I mean, that is something that we work on every single day. But is it our planned? We have everybody who wanted to was mm -hmm. moved to virtual and more. So mm -hmm. teachers who did yes. not want to teach virtual yes. are also teaching virtual. Yep. So um, Kingsley, I don't know if you have anything you want to add there. He's sitting there. Is, is there anything? Yeah. 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 And we're monitoring. I mean, we're we gonna are. we're gonna see how it goes and and um, you know check into that. So so how are we feedback. monitoring the student performance to know whether or not they're really learned anything in those ten days right. that we don't contact them? So they can. I mean, we can see it. We can see every single day how a student mm -hmm. is doing because that data is in there. So they're progressing through the system. They're taking their formative assessments, their summative assessments, mm -hmm. all through the way. So you can. I can do that right now, mm -hmm. and the the principals can look at that yep. too. So if I'm at again, I'll use Becker. It starts with a B, so I use them quite often. Um, so if I'm at Becker, I can log in and see my virtual kids. I can take a look at them. I could. I mean, you can. You can see at. A moment's notice exactly who's working what they're doing how they're doing um, if they passed a fractions test you can see all of that so. and so can our instructional coaches now yeah so that they are able to work with the teachers mm -hmm. if they're looking at and say, hey I'm seeing a group of 12 kids that are all struggling with mm -hmm. ABC here are some ideas that I have for you so our instructional coaches just got trained what last, is, what and I, th I think I think our staffing for virtual might be lower than many different districts so yeah, it is. If, if if you're using a system where the content is provided online mm -hmm. now many my I was just telling them my sister-in-law is teaching in a district where she has to teach she's doing both so she has her in-person kids and then she teaches all her virtual kids and we committed to not having teachers do both of that so we've really divided um, and I have there are some districts I believe where they are doing like a live stream where they're where they're doing that. So there there's a variety of models out there. I think for the districts that have chosen to do a to use a software where it is an online teaching mm -hmm. system, um, I think some of them staffed even higher than that. And not mm -hmm. all of ours are that high. There's right. a couple exceptions where yep. it is a little bit higher. Some. But you know we tried to staff, you know, 80 or 100 mm -hmm. if we can do that. If we could. So that that's actually pretty doable if you're just checking in with them so even every week you can so what's the date what's the official date when they can switch it, well <laughs> it was friday was no the, i'm sorry the trimester's over oh Wait, what's that date? november 17th oh, i want to say yeah. 60 days in that's yep but, that's, tri that's trimester in. india that's such a good question so we can share too that we have we've you know we have been allowing additional we originally that was in our return to learn plan that we were asking people to commit but we have had hundreds and, and hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of people who have opted to switch one way or the other mm -hmm. and we went ahead and allowed that to not make people wait until so that's why I kind of I was like eh, I get that that question is the right question we ended up really not doing that we ended up um, having that having 
additional, like we'll freeze it for a while. And we say for two weeks, we're going to just gather, like you can file your application, but we're not going to make any switches until September 21st. So I think mm -hmm. that's the next that one. So mm -hmm. September 21st, we will go ahead and make some switches because we don't want to make people wait if they know it is not working. Unfortunately, the flexibility on our part has kind of been tricky sometimes because we've had we've had families that have requested um, three or four switches back yep, and forth. They, already. Were, they started with in-person, then they went to virtual, then they went back to in-person, and now they're, now they're back on the waiting list again. So we have families who have been on the waiting list four different times to go back and forth. So we're asking people not to do that. And so we are making a decision that if you are requesting that many times, we're just going to freeze you for right mm -hmm. now. You just have to hold tight. So, um, and, and honestly, that's part of the reason the staffing has been so difficult because we did not start at the numbers that we have right now, no. the number, and we've really been trying to try to be as flexible as we could yeah. with families, but then our numbers right. just skyrocket. And then that, that becomes a staffing issue. So if people so request to go um, it's it's not a lot more, but it is a few. I mean, I think in as those times when we let people in, I do I do think it was um, like the first time it was more people wanted to come back in than those who wanted to move to virtual, but then it switched, and so it's there's there's a few more in there, and it oh, really geez. depends on like a grade level. If we only have let's say that we had at one grade level we had two teachers teaching the hundred and you know 120 kids, so then there's 60 per teacher. I'm just giving this as an example. Then at the next switch, there happened to be 30 more who wanted to come over. Well, we didn't have another teacher, so we add them to the two existing teachers. And instead of saying, okay, we're now we're on September 14th or September 24th, I know you've been teaching kids in your room, but now we're gonna pull you out of there and then all of those kids have to be split up. Mm -hmm. The in-person kids have to go somewhere else. We try to not mess with the teachers who are Already providing in teaching a roster of kids. Mm -hmm. but already, already building we relationships. We may have to. You yes. Know? Yeah. 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 We don't want to. We're trying. Really we're not trying. We're not trying to sacrifice anybody, but we don't want to have the detriment to one for the other. So we're yeah. really trying to balance as best we yeah. can. Right. To now. offer you flexibility right. causes an issue over right. here, and so we're. It, it, ha it has. We're. Tr we're. There, there are a lot lots. of pieces to this puzzle, and we're still trying to figure it we out. Are. So, and we, and we do meet, um, I think Ryan Christopher has been really instrumental in working with our virtual teachers and doing some of the PD. And so he does meet with them for a while. He was meeting with them every day. He was what are first. you finding? What yep. are you, you know, how are you doing? Yep. Right now, the, the hardest part I would, well, maybe not the hardest, but one of the most difficult parts is really keeping up with the emails from parents. Right now, it is... Like, like the example, you know, to come, come in one morning and then you have 800 emails, you're just, it's new. It's really new for a lot of people and we don't fault parents for asking questions. That's exactly what mm -hmm. they should be doing. But we also know that we're gonna have to put some more staff behind mm -hmm. supporting this new virtual learning that people don't have their minds wrapped around. So just to, I'll make a comment off Miles. I think on secondary, I think two weeks is probably better than three on check-ins personally mm -hmm. just my opinion and maybe suggestion is on ingenuity ingenuity part of it is maybe perhaps doing a workshop for the board let's try it out sure. or something and absolutely and see how the stats kind of roll up that way you know we know what this program yeah. is not just yeah. overall from virtual you know so yeah now if i i guess just playing a role you know, a little bit school. <laughs> if i um, talk to a virtual teacher would they say that it's effective teaching I would say nothing's effective as face-to-face -face. Right. but we try to do the best we can right. with uh, what the hundred percent virtual but we know face-to-face -face right. is what's the best what's the best mm -hmm. yeah. and so if you're not face-to-face -face, it's not going to be the best but right. we've used this program this program has really done well for our students mm -hmm. this isn't a brand right. new it's only brand new at elementary um, but we've been using that, as Jane said, at, at, at Expo for, for years. So we're just, we just and expanded and this. And, yeah, and, and actually yeah. somewhat at the middle schools, didn't we, for a little yeah, bit? Yeah, we did a little, little piloting, bit. trying to do, trying to give kids some other options to, to be successful. Right. So we had been piloting some things at middle school as well. Yeah. Um, you know, Kingsley had said, you know, where, what we want to prioritize as far as staffing. And, and I, I understand where that's at right now. But fiscally, are we in a place where we can keep trying to hire new hires to handle some of this and what was what would be your goal as far as how many students per virtual teacher 
I guess it depends. We really need to get past these first few weeks yeah. because right now it's a lot of logistics. Mm -hmm. The things and the questions and the, the, in, the how the teachers are inundated, I don't anticipate they will be come up. the beginning of October. A lot of the things are yeah. we tried to push next and next wouldn't come on the, you know, mm -hmm. so different so things. Technical, like technical, not yeah, it educational. Is. Right. Okay. I would say the vast majority are technical. Well, you have, you have two different things going on here. One, we're getting up to speed on programming. We're still trying to get everybody back yep. accounted for at the same right. time. So, I mean, mm -hmm. you've got a couple right. moving pieces that are kind of, you know, because you yeah. bring a new person in, the group in and they want to do virtual, now you got, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're further down on learning curve mm -hmm. of that software. Do so. we have our IT department though? Could they dedicate staff to? They are supporting us mm -hmm. <laughs> immensely. Mm -hmm. yeah. I guess I would, I would welcome uh, a report early October sometime that says sure. okay particularly on the virtual uh, <clears throat> these 50% of the kids are doing perfectly well and they can stay with 80 or 100 per but the next 10% need need a little more help and then at the lowest level uh, maybe there's a, a whole other plan for them because mm -hmm. they're just not they're just we not agree. doing well so yeah. seems like we need to analyze in a timely manner and then differentiate as fast as we can and then uh, propose at least whether the budget supports it or not yeah. becomes a secondary question mm -hmm. but at least propose what we really mm -hmm. need to do to take care of those kids that are Absolutely. virtual and yeah. not and not really uh, you know one size fits all probably doesn't doesn't work in a virtual well, world and I think a very important part too is that this is not voluntary still yet for a kid may haven't figured mm -hmm. that out yet. You know, mm -hmm. if they're not progressing, yep. they're not yep. progressing towards their completing their class for their next right. grade or mm -hmm. diploma or whatever. You know, yep. yeah, yeah, definitely analysis is. I mean, that's why we started with the data today because we've mm -hmm. got a, you know a couple weeks and they didn't start until the thirty first, so they've got a couple you know one fewer week than. Um, so they've been in, they've been in it for two weeks, and we're you know we're starting to get some data out of there that will drive our next decision. So mm -hmm. we agree, yeah. And there might be things that we can learn from the virtual setting that we'll we'll take into you know snow days or mm -hmm. next year or you know we're, we're really bigger, trying to be savvy. Larger sample size and know does it work? How's it work? For Expo and everything when you scale it back into yeah. right. Right. Yeah. But we need to get everybody logged in and understanding right. the system. And once they get humming along, we, we you know, we think, mm -hmm. we agree, we think quite a few parents will, or kids will do really well on the system. Mm -hmm. But right now, a lot of the questions are technical. Uh, well, so I, every student who needs um, a hotspot or any technology, are they pretty much all yeah. covered? Then? We are good on we're that. Good? We are, okay. I mean, there's still a few that we're working to. We have plans for all of them. So. Once in a while, when we're as we're making these phone calls, a parent will say, "I didn't, I don't have web access." And we're like, "Well, that's a problem. Yes. So let's get you hooked up." Yep. So yeah. we're doing that. I mean, we're prepared for that. We just need to make sure that we make that contact with every single person. So, you know, again, anybody who's watching, if if you have a, a student who's virtual and you don't have internet, we need we need to, you know. It was a question on the virtual application, right. it was. Yep. and it was. so if they marked it, yes, I have adequate. You know, and then they now they don't. Mm -hmm. Then we need to know that. Yeah, we they need to reach that. out because we can get it to them the we same can. day. Yeah. Right. We and, can. And, and it could have changed since the time they it had could it. have. Yep. Yeah, very well. But we wouldn't know if they didn't let us know. Yeah. yeah, right. Because we went off of that to really contact parents and say you you indicated you don't have internet. We can get you a hotspot. Literally, when you come and pick your Chromebook up, or they set up times right. to come pick up hotspots. So our IT department has been on it with. You need a, a hotspot, we can get you one today. Okay. Well, Good and if you. you don't have internet or a phone, come right here to this building mm -hmm. between yep. 8 yeah. and 4.30, yep. Monday through Friday. Yep. And and I'm sorry, mm -hmm. bouncing off Jesse's, um, some things that I I really liked hearing is, is parents who are super invested in it and you know, um, they're working three hours a day with their child together where it's almost like homeschooling with mm -hmm. all this, you know, um, supports. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be great if we were able to have some of those parents come in and just tell us what is helping them be successful so that we can share that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that is part of the plan to survey parents to ask them what's working well, what's not working well. Um, 
a lot of times, I mean, we may have to do additional to just survey, though, because a lot of times the people who will reply are, you know, they may say, oh, you know, this is working really yeah. well, or there might be on either end of I'm right. really satisfied or not satisfied at all. And so um, sometimes you have to reach out to, you know, a sample set and just find out what they mm -hmm. what they say. So, yeah, we need feedback from them. We need feedback from the kids, too. Mm -hmm. So. And question, um, someone asked me, and I did not know the answer, do we allow our virtual students to participate in sports and activities? Yeah, they, can, they can participate in things after the school day. Mm -hmm. Many of them aren't because they chose to not be in school because they didn't want to be in school, but they, they can. So what, the only place we have really limited that is, is not having them come in and out of the school day. So if they say, well, I want to go virtual, but I do want to come in for math, or I want to come in, you know, that's really hard to do. So um, right now, we, to say we have our hands full yep. with this, the new way of doing things is, is really an understatement. So we're really trying to kind of hold true to either your virtual or your in-person, but we are allowing the. And I will say, virtual. thank you for that. I know a lot of districts don't have that option, but it is uh, amazing to be able to have that connection. And, you know, Lyle made that point, just, you know, virtual students be able to still have after school activities. Mm -hmm. So it has been amazing since uh, middle school started last week. And just to see those, you know, friends and kids that they're online, mm -hmm. they have really appreciated it. So to be able to have that option mm -hmm. is great. So, well, that's yeah. all part of that social emotional yes, piece. Yes, absolutely. And it's amazing. And so. Which is why we've tried to be as flexible as yep. we can. I mean, we really, part really have. Being a team have. or mm -hmm. being, on a, being a group project or whatever that is. So. Yeah. Stephanie, yeah. I think you've been great. Seriously, yeah. like as Thank a parent, you. as listening to the community, I, I I've We've tried. Amazed. I know everything Seriously, hasn't been, been rainbows amazed. and unicorns, but we have. <laughs> no, I mean, no. we have really <laughs> tried. We've tried as hard as we could. We it is much better than I thought it would be. So, and I had high expectations. So, yep. but okay. I, I do wonder. So, I don't know if anyone here has a student that is, because um, I don't have any students in the district right now, but that is doing virtual yet coming for after school. So what, where, I guess for me thinking from the outside, how is it safer to come after school than it is during school? Mm -hmm. that, That's a, that would be my question. Mm -hmm. it, well, that, that, that assumes a question that they don't virtual just because it was a COVID. Exactly, or they right. just like the idea of they right. want to do right. virtual for some other reason, you, you know? It, more, yeah. more just, work as, for a, as an outsider in the community, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, okay, if the student doesn't want to be part of a mass number or germs in the building or the potential right. of picking up germs in the building yeah. or the uncleanliness of the building yet yeah, then it's okay when it's after school in smaller numbers yeah. I, I i just i there, guess that is do, an do we know question. do we know if that's know. the case or not do i we, would say it's, do we have numbers of people that are coming individual. that are virtual but still do after school activities. I think a lot of people are not doing that. They've chosen virtual and they're staying true to the virtual. But I do I think know. there are I some that are. I know of a, only a handful that yeah. I know about. Yeah. There may there, be there, more, there but there are a few, and, and they're so, all at the high school yeah. level that I just yeah. that I know about. But right. I'm sure there are others. But I, I think mean, we've yeah. we've you, read you in the paper that there are there are districts that are pushing the or eight is pushing virtual all day, but then they wanted to still right. run their sports. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of that same yeah. question. And right. so, you know, we're just, yeah. we're just trying, we're just, we're right. finding our and, way. And, 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 yep. well, we are some, finding well, our way. And some activities also, it could, be, it, easier, you know, it could be that, that it's not the COVID <laughs> is the reason why they chose virtual. If you give somebody an option. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Just, they might just, so it might not be the health portion of it. So yeah, yeah. So it might just be the option. And there may just lots of different. Well, yeah, but like think about if they just do marching band, you're not close to anybody. Like you're, you're not going to be, you're not going to be touching them. But so you're spit on you. no, they, <laughs> my daughter plays a trumpet. They have cloth yeah. over the edge of it. So no, they're not throwing spit. We did spit. get the bell covers. For no, band. they've got a yeah. good policy for that too. Yeah, so. we got all cross right. Country's different Thank too. you, Dr. Mohart. I'm going to, I'm going to move on since Thank all of us have been talking. I'm going to go ahead and start down to my left with India tonight with board uh, comments. Uh, no, no, I'm just, no, I, I I'm want to let. out all my questions. I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I want to let people have their time. So. Um, I think uh, I'm just going to end and say thank you for the media staff being able to stream the football games. That has been a really great option. Um, I don't know what that's going to look like with like the other sports, but you know I really appreciate that. You know, get that available to um, those who still want to watch the game, but they just want to sit out, sit at home and watch it. So I thank you for that option, working on that. So good job, media specialists, doing that. That's it. 
And I talked to um, Dan Huff, our athletic person for the district, um, the other day at a swim meet, and he talked about we have some technology that's coming, hopefully with maybe to use for volleyball, maybe even for basketball, that'll be a camera that it's not going to, we may not be able to Facebook Live them all, but to try to use technology in a better way. We don't have our own, you know, television station or anything like that, but that we can work toward that. It would be nice to have the city. I know. Space to be able to just still say, talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the career center. All right. Yeah, let's, there you go. Okay. Good I, good idea. I did actually so. watch a volleyball game. The East West game was online. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did yeah. that. So. so kudos to that. Awesome. Since you did speak to Dan Huff, yeah. do you know how the middle school situation is going to work with their games? I don't. Okay. I didn't ask him about that. Yeah. Okay. I, so. I know they're playing within Waterloo for yeah. football. Okay. So they're not. Okay. But how, can parents or spectators come in or do they buy tickets or I, just I'm guessing we're still it'll be working a, on that I'm yeah, guessing so. there's that that's TBD they just started practice this week so we're yeah. still a ways down on games so. oh you got it <laughs> and this you. Friday we will be doing a live Facebook interview with Lori Nettie and Mike Landers to detail all of the above sweet there you go. Friday <laughs> all right happen. thank and you one other question um conferences Th that'll be announced shortly so got we're working on that right. so. thank you are you, are you doodles done? Are we? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I am finished. I'm messing with you. <laughs> All right, Jesse. Uh, I'm going to do two thank yous and just a, a comment. Um, uh, one, uh, I know last week was hectic, but uh, I, I'm sure Mr. Mr. Huff was involved, but uh, Dr. Papp was in his job to get, get a football game on a Friday night that changed and changed and changed, but it was fantastic. And... Uh, a thank you to the the, the people and the animals of high school for coming up and playing a game, you know, and it was, uh, anybody's there, it was actually a pretty good game for most of the game there. Um, I think at least one record set. Uh, and just a comment uh, that if you go back three years ago, we wouldn't have played that game regardless because the field condition would have been so horrible and it pouring down rain, but yeah. that yep. they were able to play through pretty much a, a very big downpour and you just kept going so and i think those kids will you know with everything going on is that is not normal this year for them but they probably take a, a positive out of that experience they'll so, probably remember that one yeah so considering there was a 99 yard touchdown pass in that so that was that's was pretty amazing so but anyway so again the thinking to the ad's dr papp is particular i know he Probably was on a phone a lot that week, and then to pull that, they still pulled something off was fantastic, so. Well, and I guess I am mirroring what um, my two cohorts here said, but I just, I really appreciate the great efforts that our staff is making to try to make it as normal as possible, like the senior night's activities, because we had a lot of seniors last spring that really got missed out on their last activities, and the the homecomings and you know getting those in and the sen the senior nights and recognizing these kids because we don't know what's gonna the future is gonna hold and um, um, along those lines just wondering I had some public ask me and and I have not been able to get tickets to any event because you know you have to get them from the athlete or whatever so is there any way that like let's say we're playing Cedar Rapids Kennedy and we know they're only going to use 40 of their allotted 80 tickets or wristbands. It, would there be any way that we could have a will call window or something? I mean, yeah, I mean, I know that's, I can pass that along. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I'm just saying that that's that because I would like to go to some of them, but I don't really know a football player. Will you give me one of your wristbands? You so might have to go? sit on the other side. Right. That'd be okay. <laughs> but, but so, I mean, just, and I've had a couple community people ask me, you know, I go to every event typically, and I just like to go at least to a football game or something. So I have um, a freshman and a senior, so we get a lot. So if you need one, let me know. Oh, okay. There's my in. All right. Thank you, Stacy. But so just all the efforts that have been made and the staff, like having a hundred kids in a virtual class that's hard that's really hard but just that we're all taking this for the team and and i just am glad that our students are back in class and can have a little bit of normalcy if they have so chosen that so thank you thanks sue aster i'll piggyback off 
uh, what has been said already. Um, as I looked around the state this weekend, um, been following Twitter, and just the conversations that have been had about um, different districts not being able to participate um, in sports or athletics just because of um, going virtual or having started and not being in person. Um, so I think our district um, deserves a lot of credit, the, the leadership uh, for putting us in position to at least, I mean, I know we had to fight to get a game uh, this weekend, but just the opportunity to do that um, wouldn't have been there if um, those uh, procedures and policies wasn't in place to uh, go virtual uh, or go in person and not just virtual. So uh, kudos to the staff, uh, the district leadership team uh, for putting us in a position to uh, have these young people be able to participate in athletics and extracurricular activities as well. So. Stacy, um, I just had one, well, two things, but first, just a clarification from Dr. Lindemann. So <clears throat> the email that my daughter got, who's a senior in band, was that they were only allowed three wristbands for the football game, but the fo senior football players got four. And it mm -hmm. said in your update that seniors were to get four. So is that just for football, or is it for our cheerleaders, our dance, like, like why wouldn't it apply to those I don't know kids as well um, I'll have to ask on that one I don't have that answer right here okay I don't know um, band did not yeah I'll but just have to check on that Stacy I'm not sure have you had band senior night yet no. no. Maybe you get four for four that. for senior night. Yeah, no, I know I we know. did for senior night for like when it's senior night, but I don't, I don't know. I'll just have to ask on that and get back with you. Okay. Well, because it was like the football homecoming game, but that's homecoming for everybody then as well. So that's, I mean, I know band didn't get to do much, but. No, I don't think they had any. Only handful of kids even from band team there. Mine yeah. were. I had yeah. one. Raining. Yeah. The seniors got four tickets if they were in uh, other events, but band seniors did not. And that was from Dr. Pappas, hmm. that he, he I told, he passed it down. I, I was y just hoping that before yeah, we're hopefully. done, just, yeah, you know, so it that. It should be consistent, whatever yes. it is. Yes, well, yep. you want. Senior night, you should get four, because yep. you might have a grandparent. That's what I mean, yeah, grandparent, yep. if it's not pouring, they want to come see. <laughs> um, and then I just had a, a couple little questions about the return to learn plan. So the screen guards in the high school, is that just something we're not going to do then? I thought that the plan had been that we were going to do the screen, the sneeze guards for all grade levels, that that was going to just be part of what we were doing. That's what we purchased, right? Was there enough for the... Good thing you didn't wait, Kingsley. Well, thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. I actually... I, I did order my salad from your pie, so it's... 706 is the pickup, just letting you know. Um, so, yeah, so what was the question? And I'm sorry, I just totally got um, food comment. About the sneeze, the sneeze guards that are not being used in the high school. Why the desk is, shields. Desk shields, yeah. Why so. is that not something that's happening from K through 12, which is what I had thought that we purchased them for? So at the high school, we had a lot of conversation around, you know, the feasibility of them walking around with it and whether or not they were going to use it and, and many different of those type of things. Mm -hmm. And so it, it has been offered. It's been offered multiple times. Well, now I have a senior and a freshman and neither of them have heard this. I talked to Jane about it and I was told that they were offered it. Neither of them have heard it. And I can see if one of them, you know, airheaded it out, but they both wouldn't. And the communication came that it sometimes is done through announcements. There's teachers who don't turn on the announcements. And then also that it came through the screens. If they're walking in the hallway and they stop to read those, they are told they need to keep moving. And in lunch, if you're not facing it, you're not reading that. And you don't have much time to eat either. So no, they were not told that they could come get it. And there's no kids using them. Well, Zero. I, I want mine to use it, but they're going to look ridiculous. But let me just say, I was outside the first day, I believe, at West, and there's kids just walking by the administration that was there to take desk shields and masks. And so I understand that 
it may not have been communicated exactly the way that you may have wanted to, but as far as it getting done, I was there. I mean, I, I sat there with So every Andy. child walked past and saw them? I sat there with Andy and literally saw kids walk by. And so they had a, a Allie Hildeman, I believe, had a, or assistant principal, yeah. Hildeman, had a computer up that she was taking as far as people that would stop in and say, hey, I'm interested in this and from, from that standpoint. And so if you're requesting for us to maybe send an email out or do additional communication, then we can do that. I mean, I think that there were, we just have to follow up with your individual classes as kids as well, because Andy said that was going through the teachers. And so if they didn't do something, we need to follow up and make sure that was not done. And we would hold everybody accountable. Um, then the other question is, so we had talked about that they would be left every night and then they would be cleaned and given back, which I know was gonna be a headache, but it was something that we were going to do. So when you're in a high school class right now, you do not take your you don't take your mask off all day their masks are on all day until lunch and then they're sitting for at a round table with they have to take their mask off to eat whereas if they had the guards they could have those around them and they could take their mask and speak to one another and then they could also do like our k through eight which is have the ability to have their mask off during class okay what is your what's the question if we had the sneeze guards in place for every student in high school was okay. that not the plan did i miss something wasn't I, that what we had decided i don't necessarily know if it was decided across the board i think we wanted to make sure we had them available we knew for a, a fact that we wanted to definitely have them at elementary and then middle school specifically wanted them as well i mean just in general based right. on the feedback we got we got considerable feedback from high school our high school principals and administrators and even teachers around you know the feasibility of having the desk shields yes we wanted to make them available but I, I I hope that you're not saying that we should have not listened to our our building principals and our teachers as far as the feasibility of using the desk shields I don't think I'm hearing that I just want to make sure no, that no. we want to make sure we're hearing feedback and valuing people's feedback because I think right. at times you hear it on the other end where we're not doing that enough and so we truly took that into account and now I hear you're saying that that's maybe not necessarily what we should have done. And so if there needs to be a change, I don't necessarily you know, know that we could account for it well, we right here, right now. What I'm saying is that was we, not communicated we them, to we us. We pay for them we, and they're available. Correct. We're just not using them. Which right. Was, is what we kind of voted for, the fact that we paid for them and we should be using them. I think that's where she's kind of going Right, and I, I don't remember being told that we were in a board meeting. I w don't remember us saying, no, we're not going to use them in the high schools. Well, and that they no. would only be offered. I know that we said that when we were waiting for the next shipment, right? But then when we were wait because they came in on a Sunday night, but those were not the ones for the high school. Those were K-8. And we were told that there would be enough extra that if you were in high school, you could request one, right? That's the conversation that's correct. that I heard. But so then that more that. came in, correct? Didn't can yeah. request one. That's right? what, and that's what's happened. I guess that's, that, that's what I'm confused right, that's about. Why the presentation. Exactly. Exactly. But why, is, but why is it? The presumption when we bought them, I think, was yeah. everyone would use them. Now I'm hearing that they're really optional. It's a student option to use them we, or not. Is, so that, I guess, is that our current policy? Yeah, I think what I was trying to say was that there was, we, we definitely wanted to have them available. We got significant pushback at the high school level as far as utilizing them and their effectiveness of using them you know, as they moved around the building. If the board is telling us that we want to state that they have to require them, that's your, that's your prerogative to make. I think the question is, what is the current policy? They're available for every student. No yep. student needs to use them if they don't want to. Is that the policy? At no. K-8, they are using them. Because they stay Consistently, with them. right, yep, right. And use them, you mean every student? Every student. Every student. At so, K-8. Yep. And okay. so we changed the schedule at the middle school where they start back at their, at the end of the day, they go back to their first period class again so that they can leave them there. Um, and so they stay there. And so mm -hmm. at the high school, and I think what I'm so hearing is that you want us to revisit that policy at the high school. No, so it's we not just revisiting. Ask, just asking. Oh, the, yeah, I mean, the I, or maybe I'm it was never it. discussed. The presumption was. The board was didn't vote on the, no. the return to learn plan is not a board voted no. thing. So that wasn't, that wasn't, um, I mean, that wasn't something that the board voted on. But didn't, so didn't we, weren't we asked for the money though to yeah. purchase the sneeze guards? Yeah. Purchase them, yes. Yeah, and so yes. if they're not being used as we were told, then 
isn't that an issue? I'm confused by the. I don't necessarily have a problem. That was one of can the you, concerns. Hey, Aster, can you turn your mic on? Thank you, I Jason. I forget. That, yeah. If you're in a class, there's only, there's only four kids in there. Six kids. There's six right. kids in your daughter's class. That's one, one class out of her day, though. Right. 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 I'm just saying, in those situations, I mean, they can, they can sleep to the point where they didn't even need the mask, and you got Aster sleeping right. okay. between the children. But they're still alive. All right. I, I don't a, have a problem buying enough that everyone can have them if they want one, but... And I don't think they necessarily need to use them, but there needs to be a clear Just policy. Just a clarification on of what? when, you know, and if, and in, under what circumstances they're required, and under what circumstances they're optional, yeah. as well as what combination of face mask mm. and social distancing, right. and those those all three come into play. So I think it's just a a question of what a clarification of we have all the the equipment we need. We don't need, in my mind, my opinion, to use it all at once or all at all, you know. But I think we need what we're asking for here is what, after two weeks or three weeks of experience now, what is being recommended by the high school and what's being executed. I, I, I don't want to sound redundant, so I think that's what I just shared. And so I think Jane's comment was to say, if there needs to be a different direction, we just need to know. What what, what was the? Right. Yes. At All right. nine through twelve, they are available for use. What was the? And I guess I didn't hear what the the response then from teachers and administrators in high school was. Why they felt that it wasn't going to be workable. I mean, I'm not dismissing it. I didn't know what their reasoning was for why they didn't feel having the sneeze guards would work. I I thought I just said that, but maybe I didn't. And so I I talked about the feasibility of going from classroom to classroom. There was discussion. They have handles, though, right? I, I, I'm telling you what the concern is. Okay. I'm not saying that there I'm wasn't just a that, disagreement. I'm sorry, I'm just clarification. Yeah, yeah I mean, because uh, we, we, I was one of the, the one of the few districts that we really wanted the districts. Yeah. And so you're not going to get an argument from me as far as the use. Yep. I'm just saying we listened <laughs> to feedback. Okay. And so it was a feasibility of going from classroom to classroom. Mm -hmm. Was it technically their own, or do they want to use more of the middle school model of leaving them in the classroom and then getting them cleaned and then having them hand a new? Um, particular desk shield as well. There was concerns about, I think Jesse just mentioned as well, you know, the fact that we were going A, B schedule changed tremendously the requirement around the desk shield because as you know, and, and maybe, maybe you don't, that we did K through eight require in person and didn't do an AB schedule for K through eight. And so mm -hmm. because of that, the desk shield from what we heard from our teachers was paramount right. for them wanting to right. come back into um, the building. We did not have that same concern from our teachers at the high school level. We also heard from the instructional standpoint there was some difficulty with using the desk shields. I'm not saying we didn't hear that across the board because uh -huh. it was more required at K through eight, but that was a consideration that had the high schools. I can, you know, a lot of this is coming off the noggin. I mean, I can go back and talk with our principals and make sure that I have my written down list to share with the board if that's if that's what you'd like to have as well. So what's but the those difficulty? Are the theory, different what's and the, can people the request them to use them if they want? Yeah. Yes. And okay. Yeah. So that's they what's are available. Can get one if they want one. What's the difficulty using them? They don't attach to the desk conveniently or the students just don't want to carry them? I think a lot of it was just a, a line of sight that we were talking to some of our teachers about. It was, you know, hey, I can't see. I mean, I know that the middle school level, there was a question as far as, you know, the where they were in relation to the classroom and could they see through it or could they engage with other students that were across the classroom? I mean, those are some of the concerns. But the difference was, was because we were required in person, that wasn't really a consideration that we wanted to even move from. At the high school level, it was a little bit different because there was a significantly less amount of students. Significantly <laughs> less, though, can still be 20 kids in a room. So then you do have to wear your mask for the entire. And I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean to like. Well, I, again, I think you're. No, oh, I just think some the, clarification I, on it, which I right. feel like we have now gotten. And then if there's, I mean, well, there's, I, and clarification not, to parents yeah. because that yeah. was, you know, that was not. I, I don't think parents understood what was happening, and I don't think parents understand that. Um, no kids have it. So if I tell my girls, parents called and said I would like one, and they were denied. 
I, mean, I, I don't know anything. I'm just saying as a parent, I was not told as a parent until I was told a board member that they were optional. Right. I was not told that as a mom. As a mom. And okay. so there's other moms and dads who don't know that, right? Because we're privy to different information. So if I tell my girls, tomorrow you're going to go get sneeze guards, they're going to look at me and say, we are the only kids walking around with these things. And I feel bad for them, but I feel that, that when you have 20 kids in the class, there's no way that you can, you can't spread them apart. So they are, they are wearing their masks the majority of the day, and it's hard. It is. And I guess just to see how hard it would be to do it, I guess is just my question. Maybe have one class of kids do it and see how it goes for them to take it around right. all day or something. I don't know. Um, I think what, we, what we've done here is taken like a week, a week or two weeks of work in discussion with our principals and teachers and tried to have like a five to 10 minute conversation. That's why I always ask if this is the case, either let us know ahead of time or maybe we can have a discussion afterwards because I hear the concern and I hear the even personal concern. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's difficult to address mm -hmm. the specific concern because I would say there are some students using it. Are the vast majority of students not using it? Yes, but I think maybe I'm not doing a good enough job articulating kind of the reasons why not and the reasons why there was a change as far as making it more optional based on some of the conversations. And I'd be more than willing to stay a little bit after, even though I know I said 706, but we're past it now, <laughs> to talk and discuss more because I think there's, yeah. I, I'm not communicating clearly on, and I, I, again, I don't, want us, I don't want you to hear at all that we won't provide it because it's, it's there. And that's why I wanted to right. articulate. Right. I was literally standing there and we had students walk by because many of the students were just interested in like getting to school. And so if there's additional follow-up as far as what we may have failed to communicate, because we just had this conversation today, while we may have felt we've communicated ad nauseum, it may not have been effective, just based right, on maybe right. the feeling, and then we need to get That's that right. feedback and make some changes, and so we can do that. I have a and freshman that, who's that about this tall. So if she was walking in with a group of people, and she's already said that she gets pushed around, she won't use the main stairwell, because she's like, I get tipped over. So she didn't see it, and if yeah. my senior didn't see it, then she was having a senior moment, I guess. But the mm -hmm. same with the masks. They, both of them said, well, when are we getting our masks? And I was told, well, no, they, they already have them. They, they have them, but they have to request them. Yeah, and that's what, again, that was where that table was. Like, and I right. made a point down. Like, but as a mom, I, I didn't up. know to tell my kids, you have to go to right. a table when you go there. That wasn't communicated to me. I think many of the building principals took that opportunity to hand them out as people were coming into the building. And so I, I, it, you're focusing on the high school right now, but I think some of our buildings did that same thing as students. I know that that was one of the things we did for Jumpstart, where as students were walking in, we handed them their masks if they were interested. Some of them said no, some of them said yes. I do think there may be some issues as far as maybe what we've how we've handled high school students because we have put a lot of ownership on them to say, hey, if you want yes. it, come yeah. gather instead of saying, you know, here you go. We, I, I definitely don't think we did that. I wasn't, yeah. when I was standing there, it wasn't like as people were walking up, here you go, here you go. When you're dealing with 14 year olds who yeah. just right. come out of middle school, they're not quite ready sometimes to know. Well, so maybe so a, a general review and a, absolutely. I'm sure we can put something well, out certainly to not. our high school so parents and, me just and our a, kids. Humor me just a little bit because sure. I'm not clear at all after this discussion. So I sit down in my math class in uh, I'm a sophomore in uh, 10th grade, God forbid. But uh, so now <laughs> is it up to the student to decide, hey, I'm going to put my shield on and then I don't need a mask and I don't need a shield or I'm not gonna put on my screen guard, mm -hmm. but then I do need a mask, but not a shield, or I need a mask and that's good enough for everything. Is it, is it up to the individual student at all these? Or, and there's several questions there, or is it the teacher that says, okay, we only have six kids in the class, social spacing's gonna do it, nobody needs anything. Well, yeah, who, so. Who, when they can't put one on though. Well, but, Assume that they all have access to, to everything. Okay. I'm still not clear on, the, on who decides in each individual situation. Is it the students themselves get to choose? Is it the teacher that says based on this setting, social distancing is fine? Or we have 20 kids in a class, so now you all have to wear masks? Or you have the choice of wearing a mask or putting a screen guard? That's what, that's what 
I don't understand. I won't be able to answer all elements, but I guess I guess I'll start with this. And I think I really, I mean, if the board, if the board's will and pleasure, if you want to kick this to maybe more of a workshop conversation, because there's a lot of different articulations with that. But to answer your question, in a sense, um, you know, masks are definitely something that we've mandated across the board, and so the teacher really directs when there is opportunities to then lower your mask as I'm doing right now. I'm not saying that students don't have some type of choice. I mean, that could you know, let a teacher know. I mean, in the same way that they let a teacher know if they need a water, or let a teacher know if they need to go to the bathroom. So I don't want you to feel like there's no student choice at all. But we really try to not necessarily have a lot of gray area or back and forth as far as having the mask on. We wanted to make sure that the masks are utilized and used at all times, even with our teachers. That's the recent guidance we just sent, sent out. As far as we know that there's times where, hey, you may want to you know, shift your mask down to the, your chin or whatever the case may be, or even take it off. But we want to make sure that those opportunities are limited. And, and the reason why I'm saying that this is a more nuanced conver conversation, because you haven't even felt the level of concern that a lot of our staff around the masks around the death shields that I'm, I'm not able to articulate to you right now and so to answer your question it's really teacher in a sense driven i'm not saying students couldn't ask the teacher like i said for a break or whatever the case may be but it is more from the standpoint of hey the teacher can direct this and in, in the event many of the examples i use um, when you're trying to help a student and you feel some level of discomfort because that's a lot of what our teachers concerns are they could ask for the student to then put their mask you know back up on their face in order for them to work with them closely. So I hope that answers your question to a certain But he also more. asked if they have, do they have, I think trying to figure out the choice of when they can use the screen and take the mask off. Right. Yeah, I think there's, so I think I've kind of answered this in the sense of like with K through eight, it's a requirement to have the, the, the shield up at all times and so with a mask at that time, that if you take your mask down, you have breaks within the using the desk shield to take that mask down. Are there breaks when there's not a mask as well? Yes, but again, we want to make sure that's really few and far between just because there's then no barriers at all as far as health and safety. Ma masks always, so even if they have their desk no. shield, it's not like they put their desk shield up and their mask comes off. It's not right. one or no. the other. But that was the, that was the premise of buying the desk shields. Was so that you didn't right. have to wear the mask. And it allows if, for breaks, but it's not, if you have your, de if you sat behind your desk shield all day long that you would, you can take your mask off, but it's very teacher directed. Like, hey, let's take a okay. mask break, let's do that. So that the desk shields allow for that, yes. But that's changed because the concept of the desk shield yeah. was because the teacher can't see the facial expressions and all the other reasons right. and because uh, or somebody the sound, needs to answer sure, sure question the sound is and muffled yep. and everything yep. so in effect what i'm hearing is we bought those but then since that time yep. we changed and said you have to wear a mask anyway well a lot has so then, changed yeah so then why yeah. would you need yeah. a desk shield? right well right. no k to eight is still no, no, using no. I, again and this is where i tried to just articulate yep. i don't think you have listened to the level of concern from our staff around the desk shields we wouldn't have shown up on a sunday night if they weren't going to be important for us even to start operation day one and so i don't want you to think even with a mask and right. the desk shield that it was just gonna it doesn't matter it, it matters greatly if we were to take that away please believe there will be tons of teachers coming to the board meeting to discuss what that means and so but you're I, saying it doesn't matter for 9 through 12 that they don't want them. I'm not saying it doesn't matter for 9 through 12. I'm saying that there was an option more for student-led if you would like to get that death shield from that standpoint. Excuse me, from that standpoint. So we're requiring both at the K-8 level. K-8. Yeah, and I think, I've, I think, again, we've, I don't want to go over the same reasons I just went over. Right. There's, there's different documented reasons why it's, right. it was an option at 9 through 12 and K-8. And I, I, again, no, I don't want to Again, that was so. not the original concept as I understood it. It was... Well, it was you bought the death shield so you didn't have to wear yeah, the mask. Yeah, we had to change on those too. Black heart, yeah. Initially yep. they said we could wear face shields and then the, as an effective means and then they said we can't. And remember when we ordered the death shields, I believe we started that process in June and ordered yeah. in July. Right. So and, a and lot I'm, has really changed. And I'm changed. not criticizing. Yeah, no, you know, I, I don't no, hear no. criticism. It's just that we need things have changed and that's, yeah. I think, yeah, that's the right. issue here, people don't understand yeah. and the new rules. Yeah. And that's and what I'm saying, let's do a workshop because it's yes, a lot more agree, yeah. it's and a lot more elongated than yeah, even what I'm trying to explain right now. This might not be the best right. setting to go into all and of I the details, want, so it might be better if we 
because of that, I want the clarification. But to answer Stacy's question, I think our families need that clarification yes, as yeah. well. Thank and I that. think that's what you're asking that for. That was my only which, concern. Absolutely. Yeah. That, yeah, and so and I, I don't think want my kids to be the only ones walking around right. with it. Because, right. You but know. if they are available, but if and they are and you want it, you yep, should yeah, do that. I agree. And I, I mean, would. You know me, I would. But well, but my I think that that requires have us that. to yeah, mm -hmm. ferret that out a little bit further. You know? We but, know we're and, only in week three. I know right. we've had a lot of stuff, but because we are asked as as board members, we do get asked questions about to, to clarify. And so I think just mm -hmm. a just a streamline of actually what the process is and what's happening would be really helpful. people listening have probably learned a little bit. Yeah. 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 And again, I just, so, the, the, no, that's the, the biggest piece was just, Let's there's a lot that. of work. And I think I've even had this conversation with a teacher recently that, you know, made a similar comment about, hey, why don't you just do this? It's like, yeah, like there's like no, there's hundreds of people that have been a part of work. I just want to make sure and we're I'm, honoring yeah, their I'm, voice. I'm sorry, I'm not diminishing any of that, Kingsley, not at all. I was just trying to figure out Absolutely. where the, the, the gap clarity. in communication <laughs> was. And then what, you know, are we seeing kids utilizing these? And if not, do you think we could find a way for them to be utilized? That's all. How could we? Well, we Perfect. should be able to send something. We have Tara right here so she can draft something and get something out to yep. high school parents and reminding them masks are available, dust shields are available, and here's what you just need to do. So we can, yep. we actually have a communication getting ready to go out anyway, so we can yep. certainly do That's that. That's awesome. And we can, Thank you. And we can come back yeah. to, in, to Kingsley's point and Lyle's point, yeah. we and can the, come back to what and that. And the policy point. ought to evolve, you know, I'm, I, yeah. I would, it's going to have to. Love to be able to get rid of the face shields because they, they I mean, the masks because they, you know, muffle the sound, you can't hear, mm -hmm. and you can't see people's expressions. So, yep. you know, if they're required right now, fine. But if we can find a way around that, I would welcome an opportunity to, yep. you know, change we the policy. We can talk more. We need to. Yep. Well, if we have Google, they do. We yeah, we did go there. And I think, to Kingsley, good. it would be good if you did have, you know, the reason in why a lot of the high school kid p yeah. teachers chose that so. it would not be a good idea because yeah. like I you can said, see. You said, you could get that to us and we could have a work session and talk about it more. And I can see more germs carrying that thing around all day. Well, getting, I think that was, ugh. and how they get cleaned. And, yeah. yeah. It's the cleaning exactly. piece of it. Okay, okay, I'm going to stop. Okay. Lyle, <laughs> you're certainly not last but least, but. <laughs> yeah, I'm least, I'm sure. Um, Jane mentioned she's proud of what uh, district, the district response, and, and I'm, I'm pretty pleased too, particularly, you know, directors of any organization have a, several responsibilities, but a couple of them is really fidelity of the mission, to the mission, and stability of leadership. And I think on those scores, you know, if you read our mission statement up there, it's all about kids. Mm -hmm. So the fidelity is to educating kids. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really pleased that I don't hear anybody in our organization that's waffling about whether or not we should follow our mission statement and educate kids, unlike some other districts in the state, you know, <coughs> saying, well, maybe we should just give up the mission. Well, uh, or, comp or compromise it to, to a large degree. So, so I'm, I'm pretty pleased about that. Uh, now the mission statement is, is, like I say, is just about kids. It doesn't mention any adults, but obviously to execute the mission statement, you go into the people portion there and uh, you know, attract and retain quality people, align talent with the needs. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility there. And I think, as I understand it, we've been pretty accommodating Kingsley and, uh, and other people's in terms of of analyzing each individual employee's situation. I wouldn't call it a IEP quite yet, an <laughs> individual employment plan, but it, it, it kind of is that because everybody's circumstance is a little different. So I think it's the right approach and effective approach and, and uh, hopefully we can educate kids effectively both both in person and and virtually. Again, we've got a few questions on the virtual side. The other one is stability of leadership. You know, we talked about the contract, uh, Dr. Lindemann, a couple of weeks ago. But you know, the aspect we didn't talk about that's so important, I think, is the three-year duration. Because uh, you know, I feel fortunate that we have an, a, an experienced captain 
uh, to navigate these uncharted and, and uh, turbulent waters, at least for the foreseeable future. So as our responsibilities as overall board of directors in terms of fidelity of the mission and, and the organization that's doing that, and then the stability of leadership and the quality of leadership, uh, like I say, from Dr. Lindemann on down, and everybody seems to be really on the same page on that. So I really, I really feel good about uh, our district, particularly when I compare it to some other ones in the state that were really kid focused. And sometimes that's easy, sometimes it's not so easy. Right now it's not so easy, but, but we're, we're true to that mission. So those are my comments. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, then seeing nothing else to come before the board, I would, I'm not gonna comment, I'm, I'm you know what, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be real honest, it's, it's, it's my anniversary tonight, so I'm trying to, I'm, I know, I'm gonna have dinner, I'm gonna have dinner with my husband, so I'm gonna, I'm not gonna make any comments, and I can't believe I just said that on this thing, so just pretend like I didn't say that. And you haven't ordered your salad yet? Oh, jeepers, <laughs> no, it's all good. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, anyway, so the next time we will be back in this room is September 28th for our next board meeting. And until then, um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn unless, okay, so in the moved. second, thank second. you. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Good night. Thank you. <laughs> no, I just.